back. We took the summer off. This is Video Game Hangout, episode five. Thank you, William. <laughs> I am here with my husband, Don, and my friend, William. Say everybody hello. Hello. Everybody hello. <laughs> Don. Hello. <laughs> so, I'm being distracted here by, you know, people writing on their Google. Um um documents but either way anyway welcome back uh video game hangout every so often because i'm not even gonna bother saying monthly because we haven't kept up with that since the beginning um where we just talk about video games and stuff that we've been playing um we do not uh, we try to follow the news but we're not like completely adherent to it so this is just a general talk between friends and um so anyway i guess i'll start with you william how has your summer been <laughs> in terms of video gaming? Uh, in terms of video gaming, not too bad. You know, since mm -hmm. we're talking strictly video gaming, so I can say that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I played some games. I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe just spit fire through a few of them and then talk a little bit more about one. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I got Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy on the Switch. Nice. Awesome. Um, I, uh, I, I my only experience with Crash prior to this was um, playing Crash Two on at a friend's house on the PS One back in the day. Oh uh, wow, we actually owned all of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never had a PlayStation, so um, PS One <gasps> specifically. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, a friend came over earlier this year and um, brought his copy of Crash. We played together. We did the whole you know switch switch off method <laughs> we yeah. played we played crash one until uh we got stuck at one level so we moved on to the crash two which is uh, a yeah. lot easier and mm -hmm. uh okay. I've, been, I've been playing uh both crash one and crash two switching between the two uh crash is a lot of fun there's yes it is yeah it's got uh, it's got <laughs> good music it's got good it's a lot of good vibes to it um <laughs> just uh <laughs> yeah no it's good that, it's that good that's, actu head. that's yeah. actually on my uh, um my uh, they have screensaver um, not screensavers uh, the, the wallpapers Seems. on PS4 they actually have one mm -hmm. for it. I'll I'll say this those uh, at least the first two games they uh, especially the first one they don't mess around um no. that bridge it's also harder from the original yeah i, I heard about that uh, that bridge level can uh, go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it made harder because of how. It, 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 for those who don't uh, remember or don't know about what happened with the uh, Insane Trilogy, they could not get the original um, architecture, I guess, for the original game. So they basically simulated a copy of the original games. The problem was that they miscalculated how f where the arc stops from where he drops. So in the past, he would jump in an arc. And in this one, you just about go up and then straight down in a straight line. So the jumps are shorter. Yeah, there's in a, the new version. Yeah, so when you have the bridge version, where you, it is, you have to be spot on, or it's you're just gonna keep dying over and over. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, um. <laughs> <laughs> I have not bought it. I do want it at some point. Um, I I don't know when. Um, we played the. We still have the originals. We've never gotten rid of any of our old games, so we have the original games. I am still praying and hoping that with. Uh, the success of Crash that we get Crash Team Racing because that is still a phenomenal racing game. Oh, I maybe. played that more than I did uh, Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. So go ahead, you were in the middle of that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Crash Crash Bandicoot is uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's very um, it's very different than like playing Mario sixty four. Like the, yeah. they're both platformers, but they're both very different from each other. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just I'll just say that. Um, so I've been uh, another thing I've been doing, uh, video game wise, is uh, I've uh, been playing uh, Breath of the Wild again. Uh, I mean, I beat it back when it was new, mm -hmm. um, uh, after like a hundred hours of playing. But I purchased uh, the season pass, which is just because uh, it was it was 
they came out with all the DLC back in December. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny on the uh, on the store page it says, "Give me a link to the past." Pass. <laughs> yeah, hmm. they knew what they were doing. Um, it didn't come with it. Uh, no, no, you gotta because it can't. It was it was it's it was a post launch DLC. Yeah, but whenever you do anything on PlayStation or Xbox, if you bought it first day or like a collector's edition, it came with a season pass. Oh, um, no. Uh, so Nintendo doesn't know how to do season passes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was just they were just like you know, for twenty dollars you get more content. It's like, well, I got no problem with that because like the, mm-hmm. the the built in game is like good value so yeah uh the funny thing is is that like i haven't actually gotten to any of the season of the of the dlc missions because <laughs> i was too yeah. busy playing mo- getting more of 100 percent of the base game yeah i literally sunk an extra five hours and then i realized oh wait a minute i haven't actually done any of the new stuff yet yeah because <laughs> breath of the wild is just that good like it's i never get bored playing it i have like you know well over 100 hours at this point but Mm -hmm. it just you can just get lost in that gigantic map and Mm -hmm. have a lot of fun with it so yeah breath of the wild is still really good and maybe i'll actually get to the dlc soon um (laughs) also played uh been playing sonic mania because uh the physical release came out uh as sonic mania plus um also on the switch um do you know 2D Sonic games? Oh, yeah. I know of them. I yeah. never really liked them very much. Well, as a, it's a personal preference. Well, imagine if they made another good one after oh, good. all this time. Oh, I've heard stories that just, can you please actually do a good one? <laughs> so, so funny story about this one. Since I imagine you're not super familiar with with uh, Sonic Mania, um, mm-hmm. Sonic Mania is made by a bunch of uh, Sonic fans. Uh, they're made by uh, people who used to do ROM hacks of Sonic. Wow! And then they made okay. they made their own uh, company called uh, Head Cannon, and they okay. they got Sega to approve Sonic Mania, which is a mixture of original uh, levels and remixed 2D levels from Sonic uh, One, Two, Three, and Knuckles, uh, and a little bit of CD actually for that matter too. So it's it's a it's a celebration of Sonic in many ways. Um, the sprite work is is gorgeous. Uh, the music is phenomenal, especially the remixed sa- songs of, of some of the, uh, you know, the, the classic stages. And, like, with the classic stages, it's not like they're just retreading old ground. It's, like, new mm-hmm. interpretations of the older stuff, and it's really cool. Like, in Chemical Plant Zone, you now have, like, switches that will... You know, uh, shoot chemicals into certain objects and make them bouncy or make them something else. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, really well done. And like, it's you know, there's there's uh, there's a Eggman boss battle that turns into Doctor Robotnik Mean Bean Machine. A- so it's an actual new title rather than a remix of an old. Oh no, it is. Old stuff? It is very much a new title. Okay. Like there are levels based on the old stuff, but it is very much new. Okay, that's cool. And with Sonic Mania Plus, with the, with the physical release, they came out with like more content, more characters. Because originally in Sonic Mania, it was uh, Sonic Tails and Knuckles, but now with Mania Plus, they added uh, two more characters, uh, Mighty and um, uh, uh, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Crap! That's what's guy. Right? Hold on. What's his name? Hold on. Uh, sh- Okay, this is gonna bother me because I, because like, <laughs> yeah, because that doesn't happen to me at all. Uh, Ray, thank you, Mighty the Armadillo <laughs> and and Ray the Flying Squirrel, which is significant because they're from uh, an obscure Sonic game called uh, Sega Sonic, the arcade game. It was this arcade okay. game that used a trackball uh, for the gameplay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was Japan only, so if you haven't played it, uh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, there's a lot of those, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, but yeah, this is a great game. It's a good. It's a great. It's a great 2D Sonic game, and like apparently it sold better than Sonic Forces, which was actually made by Sega proper. So uh, I don't know what that, I don't know what that says about the future of Sonic, but uh, mm. I would assume that they had at least some permission to do this. Oh no no no! It's it was, it was published by Sega. Oh okay. This this okay. yeah this is this has. This it's just a completely different team. Yeah, completely different team. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Uh, Christian Whitehead was also the the lead of that. He's the lead guy of uh, the project, and he was kind of like he was, you know, he he was the main like you know fan game maker who turned into an official Sonic game maker. Cool. Which is see that's how the, that's actually cool when because when you have like a, there's a huge modding modding community for every game that's out there, yeah. <laughs> and it's nice when they end up stepping up and being able to help out and do proper content on future titles of the of the games that they've been modding for that long. It's like the best reviewed Sonic game in like 20 years. That's great because yeah. I've always heard a lot of problems with the Sonic games. Sonic is great, but uh, some of the games are not as great and some have jank that I'm willing to look past. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my history with the Sonic series. Um <laughs> I also uh, I also went to a convention called a video game con AVGC. Uh, mm-hmm. We play. I uh, went with uh, with my friend. Where is that? That is in Jersey, uh, in the Meadowlands Convention Center. I want to say. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, new location uh, for them this year. Because uh, mm-hmm. they had, I mean, they had easily uh, uh, outgrown the old location. Uh, but it seems to happen here in Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Was it Meadowlands or Garden State Convention Center? Was it right off of Route 287? Yeah, yeah, that's not going to get you anywhere when it comes to me. Uh, oh, Meadowlands. Okay. <laughs> Meadowlands Exposition Center. There. Oh, okay. Exposition okay. Center. Okay. That's a co- I mean, that, that's a good hour and a half from us. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is North. As <laughs> yeah. soon as you said Meadowlands or even Garden State, uh, it's up there. Yeah. So. Um, it was a fun time. I got to play. I got to. Uh, we beat. We beat an arcade game, an arcade shooter game. Uh, <laughs> it's easy when you don't have to pay uh, money. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, we played some wind <laughs> So I would assume basically. I would assume that basically when you when you go in, you basically have um, uh, a free pass to all of them. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Everything's. F- so yeah, it's it's you just pay to get in, and they got you okay. know they got a dealer section. They got. Uh, uh, you know, a bunch of arcade machines. All the arcade machines are set to free play. Um, cool. The the I was a little disappointed that there was no pinball this year. Um, and I think I personally feel like their selection of older arcade machines was uh, less um, than years past. Um, but in, in in exchange for more of a focus on uh, I guess more modern arcade games, which uh, mm-hmm. I personally just prefer playing classic. That's that's just me. Um, yep. Uh, but the stuff we played was still good. Windjammers. Uh, we played, we played uh, Parodius, the arcade version, but we got the bad ending, oh. so we technically didn't beat it. Um, <laughs> 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 we played, uh, we played some. They got a lot of lot of old uh, gaming systems there. Played the uh, what's it called, the Super Cassette Player, some, wow. some, um, which is a Japanese only. Um, uh, video game console that like predates the NES, and you can tell because the buttons on the controller are on the side and not the front. Um, it's so it's weird to use. Um, we used this. Uh, oh god, it's been it's been a bit, so I'm trying to remember. We played uh, a video game version of of Zenki, the anime Zenki, um, which the, the game itself is actually very generous with with its health uh, items. Um, <laughs> on uh, it's like. It's not the PC engine, but it's like a it's like a soup up version of the PC engine. Like it looks like a com- computer tower, but like it's a video game console. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, I'd have to I have to look up for it at a future date. To, but yeah, um, that was fun. Just just a lot of you know just just fun. I bought bought a lot of Famicom games because that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought Doki Doki Panic, which uh, made me happy because that was one of the games I've been <laughs> I've been looking for for a while now. 
Um, so yeah, I got uh, I got the Godzilla NES game that we talked about in a, a few episodes mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. So I'm glad to to get that one from my childhood. There's a I think I only got a few NES games left that I would have to rebuy. Um, so yeah, that was a good time. And uh, I guess sort of the the last thing mm-hmm. that I want to talk about in my sort of semi rapid fire uh, <laughs> session is uh, Splatoon two. Um, so uh, I, I'm I'm sure you're well aware because I won't shut up about it. I do love sp- <laughs> I I do love me some Splatoon. And that's good though because yeah. that's a uh, that was a new IP about what four years ago now. Uh, yes, yeah, three, I think four, it was four, years. yeah, ish, yeah, yeah. On the it's nice that they actually came up with a new IP and that it's so well received because it's a good game from what I understand. And it was so well received on the Wii U of all things. Yeah, like, which it's a better iteration of the fact that the game uh, itself is good. It's not just because it's on the hardware. Even yeah. a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Splatoon two, uh, like I love it, and um, I guess one of the things that I've been working on a lot it was the single player content. Uh, so, uh, single player mode. Uh, it's it's, it's weird because I spent so much time playing multiplayer, I kind of forgot about focusing on the single player. Uh, but mm-hmm. single player is cool in that, like, um, just kind of like the levels of design and just, you know, because you're an inkling and you got to stop the evil octolings. Um, and one of the funny things that uh, Nintendo, that the Splatoon does is they do uh, this thing called Splatfest every once in a while where uh, it's a multi, it's a, it's a day long event where you pick a team and you fight everyone on the other side of the team and whoever scores the most points wins for their team. And Splatoon mm-hmm. 1 and Splatoon 2, they both have a pair of hosts. In Splatoon 1, it was the Squid Sisters, Callie and Marie. And uh, the final... Seriously? Yes. Calamari, yes. huh? Yes, that is, <laughs> that is exactly what they were going for. Um, uh, but what, what was interesting was that uh, the final Splatfest was, are you Team Callie or Team Marie? They, they actually went there. And... Um, the uh, in the end, Marie won, and what the developers did with Splatoon Two was they used that to as the basis of the storyline for Splatoon Two single player mode. Oh. So one of the things is that the Squid Sisters uh, in Splatoon One are secret agents who help you defeat the Octolings the first time around. Uh, in Splatoon Two, um, there's this whole backstory that you read before the game even came out about how the sisters started to create solo acts, Marie. Um, you know, became more popular. Callie started to, you know, get lost in the shuffle and started start to be a bit depressed. And she went back to the country with her family and then she disappeared. And so uh, in Splatoon 2, which takes place two years after the original, you're helping Marie find Callie and stop the Octolings from taking over Inkopolis again. Cool. You could probably imagine what happens. <laughs> what happened to Callie? Um, she, she, you know, I, I don't want to spoil it, but, um, <laughs> what I'll say is that the, the levels are fun. The final level, the final boss battle, I should say. In mm. single player. In single player. While I would say technically not as good as the final boss battle in, 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 uh, Splatoon 1, mm. um, what they do musically and, and thematically is... So good. It is, good. It is. It is so good. Um, and so yeah, I beat it, and it's 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 great. And then they came out with the Octo expansion uh, over the summer, um, which is a twenty dollar uh, single player DLC content. Um, and and the, and I had no problem paying with it, be, uh, paying it because between Splatoon one and Splatoon two. They gave away so much single, pl- uh, sorry, so much multiplayer DLC for free mm-hmm. that like I had no problem playing paying twenty bucks for an extra campaign. Um, okay. So in the Octo expansion, you play as an Octoling um, uh, named Agent Eight. In a uh, in Splatoon One, you're Agent Three. In Splatoon Two, you're Agent Four. Um, okay. You play as an Octoling who who gets amnesia. You're trapped underground. And what's nice is that. Um, this wasn't like some sort of like copy paste, uh, you know, DLC. There are a lot of new assets. There's a lot of new stages. There's a lot of new mission types. 
um, mm-hmm. there's it, the, thematically it is so different because the because the because the campaign in in the main campaign in Splatoon two is very cheerful is is very bright there's a lot of like you know a lot of happy music even though you know it, it is tough at times it's a lot mm-hmm. more upbeat octo expansion is very dark very mysterious very moody um it's it totally it's very different and it's got a bit of an 80s vibe to it too um one i've th- noticed there's a lot of retro stuff now it's sort of like yeah everything's back into the 80s again <laughs> yeah um the so Octo so um Octo expansion also focuses on the hosts of Splatoon 2 um um uh, uh Pearl and Marina uh known as Off the Hook. They're um they're they're more hip hop uh, whereas uh you know the Squid Sisters are more pop um and so you get to know some of their backstory and they they're interacting. Um the way the Octo expansion works is very different. There's 80 levels which is more than the single campaign, the main single player campaign. So it's pretty good value, actually. Um, but you don't have to do all the levels. It's sort of like a, it's a, it's sort of like a maze where you don't know where the paths of the stages go until you start playing the levels and unlocking stuff. So okay. you could end up beating the single player campaign uh, for Octo Expansion relatively quickly if you just try beelining it. Um, but if you want, you can just go for completionist also. And some of those levels are tough, <laughs> very tough. And what makes it interesting is that in order to play a level, you have to pay money, in-game money. I should okay. <laughs> just make perfectly clear. Um, and there have been some levels where I blew so much of my cash <laughs> trying to beat it. So it's basically turned into an arcade. It turns, yeah, a bit, yeah, it turns into arcade. And like, what's interesting is that a lot of these stages also have difficulty selectors in the form of what weapons you use. Like, okay. like there's one uh, mission where it's like shoot the shoot twenty green targets, but you can't hit any red targets. And so it's like, if you want an easier experience, you get one of the sniper weapons that has a very narrow shot. Uh, but if you want a harder experience, you get the gun that has a bit more of a splatter shot with its with its ink. Right, with the risk that you'll hit the wrong Ex- color. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then there's also like levels where it's like you only have X amount of ink, and if you run out of ink, uh, you got to start over. Uh, there's yeah. there's levels with like strict time limits and you know stuff like don't touch the enemy ink. Period. Um, it's yeah. It gets very tough. Once again, the music is just so good. Splatoon is very on point with their with their music. Um, you yeah, know, the multiplayer stuff is is great too. The 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 um, the salmon run, which is their version of a horde run, is a lot of fun mm-hmm. and can get very tough at times because you don't just defeat the enemies. You got to grab their eggs and deposit them. And if you don't deposit enough eggs, you lose. So it's your your it, it forces you to move around because you gotta get the eggs and deliver them. I was gonna ask you about the multiplayer because I've heard issues. I've had in general. I've had, with. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't have problems with it. You know, it's okay. it's, um, like, I think. I mean, yeah. Sometimes I get dropped, but like, nothing compared to. I mean, I would say like it's no different than like other multiplayer games. You know, um, mm-hmm. they use a. I don't know the technical term, but they use, like, a delay system uh, for for lag where, like, you'll ink the ground and it might not show up right away, but it will in a few seconds when it reconnects. Um, Okay. uh, So sometimes it's noticeable, especially when you uh, explode from getting hit with ink that you didn't see because Mm -hmm. of delay. Um, That's when it gets really obvious. Do you primarily do single or multi? Or I do. A, I do a, just a combination of both. I do a lot of okay, multi, cool. um, and I love. Okay, cool. I, I love it. I just I love the multiplayer so much. It's so much fun. Cool. Um, cool, cool I cool, haven't, cool. and for anyone who's who's wondering, uh, I have not purchased the uh, the new online pass requirement that Nintendo has, where you have to pay to play online. Um, I just because I haven't played any uh, uh, multi, multiplayer games since they in- implemented that, so. I don't know. That was what at the end of September. End of September, literally right before I left for Sp- Just, Spain. So there was no point. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was no point in me getting it at that point in time. No, it was a what twenty dollars a year? 
Twenty dollars a year. Okay. Uh, Twenty dollars a year, and you get access to uh, NES games uh, um, streamed to your um, console mm-hmm. um, at, at no additional cost, and you get access to special offers as they're made available. I personally was never crazy about the multi uh, paying for multiplayer stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Even like up until or the, your cloud saves. Oh, uh, yeah. The just uh, I was never crazy about any of that stuff. I would pers- like if it was up to me, I'd prefer if they just kept pushing it back. But you know, I'm gonna have to pay it because I want to keep playing Splatoon um, online. So yep, I'll do it. Luckily, it's not that expensive, but it, there's yeah. a lot of issues with it. <laughs> I'm sure there are. Like I yeah. haven't even bothered using the smartphone app because it's like I don't want to. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, look, I'm not. Why would you need that to put your freaking headphones on? Just like, I, come I on, know. people. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not getting into that stuff. Uh, like, oh no, it, there's yeah, no point. It's, 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 <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I'm just like, fine, whatever. I'll pay it eventually. But like, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, S- Switch is a great console, but it's got issues, and like, you know, the way, shocking, the way Nintendo handles something involving online uh, isn't. Uh, particularly yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, they forget it's 2018. Everybody's yeah. been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> at least, at least Splatoon plays well, so I'll take that. Yes. So that's why I was asking whether or not you played multiplayer. Or oh, I play or a lot of multiplayer. Player. I have a lot okay. of a lot of multiplayer. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the cool. only. Actually, I just realized it's the only Switch game I actually play online, outside of the occasional Mario Kart, but. I would essentially just be playing $20 to play Splatoon at the moment, but whatever. I'll do it. Because <laughs> I love the game. Cool. By the way, Don, mm-hmm. uh, how's your month? But although <laughs> it's, you know, we live with each other, so. <laughs> yeah. You don't know how I know what yours is like. So, I'm how was tired. your summer? Well, because the last time that we did this was right before E3, so well, go for it. Um, not much really goes on um, during my summers due to effectively working outside, so usually uh, days consist of, oh my god, it's hot, oh my god, it's humid, why do I still live in the Northeast? Humid, Mm -hmm. not humid. And then coming home, taking a shower, and falling asleep, with maybe some gaming on the weekends. So, No Man's Sky Next uh, has been a lot of fun. Um, Yes. Okay, uh, question, question. Mm -hmm. So, as someone who has not played No Man's Sky, had was very confused about No Man's Sky prior to its original launch and then mm-hmm. heard a lot of the backlash around No mm-hmm. Man's Sky. So two main questions. Okay. What has changed and is it good? Okay. The answer is the core of the game has not changed. Okay. What they have done is followed through on promises. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when the game launched, Sean Murray who is the the head of um, Hello Games, got very, very excited and did not temper his excitement in his comments to the press and Mm -hmm. to the internet, Mm -hmm. which, let's just say they took exception to that. Well, they don't have a PR department. Right, so he was... He was He spent a lot of time speaking about things that he wanted to do Mm -hmm. and things that he planned to do as if they were in the present tense. Which, of course, the internet takes and runs with. So, the bottom line is, he should have kept a tighter grip on exactly what he was saying, Mm -hmm. knowing that the gaming media and denizens of the internet are going to parse every single word he says. Yep. Um, And Sony, of course, took over... I a also lot of that as well. I, that didn't help. I think what was going on as well is because Sony was publishing. They were, I think, I can't prove, but I think they were pressuring him for time to market. Mm-hmm. Um, no, that actually no. is right now. Yeah, they, which they is, I mean, from a business perspective, I understand it. You can't let mm-hmm. games languish uh, unless you're Square Enix and then you turn it into an art form. But <laughs> <laughs> or you're Hideo <laughs> Kojima. Yeah, yes. yeah, or, or Kojima. Although Kojima gets games out faster than Square, so I can't really, really rip Kojima too hard. Hey, on that the one. only closer, the only closer one would be Blizzard. Yeah, but Blizzard has always said it's ready when it's ready. When it's ready, and that's oh. it. 
<laughs> so, oh. that, that reminds me, actually, I have to do one, one more to talk about when, when you're done. Really okay. Yeah. So yeah. the core of the game is what it has always been. It is an exploration game. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. It's laid back most of the time. Um, mm-hmm. until you attempt to uh, mine or harvest something that the Sentinel Force doesn't want you to, and then it's not so laid back anymore. Yeah. Um, what they've done is added a ton of content and a ton of features that they wanted to put in, but just didn't have time. Is what it, it feels came down like to. a brand new game. Yeah, now you can actually run into people in the game, for real. Yep. Uh, I had actually linked up with a friend of ours that I hadn't spoken to in ten years. That we just mm-hmm. happen to, you know, life just, I mean, we only live 15 minutes from each other, but he's got mm-hmm. kids, we don't have kids, and life is life. Mm-hmm. So, they've done a great job with the game. They overhauled the graphics. Um, they, they straightened out some issues mm-hmm. um, while creating a few others <laughs> in that <laughs> there's not there's not a great, like, planets are single biomes. You're not going to go... Like, it's a cold planet, it's a hot planet, it's an acid planet, it's a poison planet. Um, and creatures tend to repeat a bit, because everything's supposed to be procedurally generated like Dungeons and Diablo. Mm-hmm. They've had to scale that architecture back in order to fix problems, and they're mm-hmm. promising to expand it more as time goes on. I have no problems believing that, because they've followed through on the promises they've made. Next came out what... August or July? Uh, I think it was July. But All I know is that every single week they have been doing updates. Yeah, and some Free of them, updates. some of them mass. Yeah, have not spent a single dime over the original fifty nine ninety five. Yeah, and they haven't even offered a way for you to mm-hmm. spend that. They've just followed through. Yep. Um, they could have easily turned this all into DLC and nickel mm-hmm. and dime people to death, which I think would have sunk the company. Uh, yeah. So instead, they just did the right thing and followed through, and it's paying off for them. Um, last time I saw the Steam numbers, the games were the play players were very very high in the game mm-hmm. compared I'm compared still to what it was. It. <laughs> so if you enjoy exploratory type things, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It is not. I mean, you can play it like a space pirate, but just remember there is law enforcement, and they don't fool around. <laughs> they also cannot be negotiated yeah. with, so, you know. Yeah. It's definitely more of a uh, James T. Kirk kind of diplomacy. But... Uh, <laughs> right, yes. Um, you know, so, you don't have to start a fight, but if you'd like to continue the game, you had better finish it. <laughs> so, or right. know how to run away. Oh, yeah. one interesting bit. So, your pulse engines, you've got uh, three modes of transportation. What... There are three types of... of Transportation, what equates to in Star Wars or Star Wars Star Trek terminology? You've got your impulse engines, which are um, this doesn't even really work for this analogy, but for lack of a better one, impulse engines are what you kind of putter around on. Uh, your pulse drive has you moving, I guess, near the speed of light. If you are under attack, you cannot engage that. So you're limited to impulse engines, and ships have different top speeds. This could be very, very bad. And when you see on the screen at your, at your cursor, if you were in space, and pointed your cursor at a planet, and it says the planet is 20 minutes away, that's real time. Yeah. You will fly in a line for 20 minutes. Yep. <laughs> so I believe hope, that. hope that the pirates get bored and go away, or that you can blow them out of the sky. Because holding buttons and sticks down for that period of time I have not done since the days of the NES. So, <laughs> uh, but it's I would highly recommend it if you enjoy that type of game. I, I think it's very good. They've done a great job and they continue to do more. So I think it's only going to get better. Well, it's now... It's always been on the PlayStation. It's on Steam now. And, and it's and, Xbox uh, as well. Just just came out on Xbox, which I believe was was the next one. I think when someone had asked about Switch, it's sort of like, we're trying to make sure we're only (laughs) nine people in our company. (laughs) We're trying to make sure we're fixing this one first. They're focusing on game-breaking and uh, game-breaking bugs as well as what would boil down to infrastructure improvements for later (laughs) expansion. What was the joke? It said 99 bugs uh, Oh, the programming thing. 
Oh, one goes down. Yeah, take one down. Fix it around. Yeah. <laughs> one hundred and five bugs. They're now on the wall. Yeah, that's that's yeah. So, so. moving on. Um, gave God of War a break. Oh. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent game. Hey. Very well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was just so surprised, and it's a bit of a departure from uh, classic God of War games in that combat in this game requires you not that the other ones don't but this is a little different and if you play it you'll you understand what I'm saying mm-hmm. combat requires you to know exactly what your Kratos is capable of and to yeah. utilize it if you plan on surviving right yeah. uh, it does not start out as very difficult but that difficulty ramps up exponentially at certain points especially when yep. you get into boss battles yep have you have you tried it yet or have you just heard about it Oh, I, I mean, think you've seen. I think you said, didn't you say you saw a let's play of it? I, I've I've seen a full let's play of it. Yeah, so okay. you you know what I mean. There comes a point where it's like, whoo, okay, <laughs> I need yeah, to learn how to play this. Yeah, we still haven't finished it. Yeah, like, we still haven't finished it at all because uh, we technically could just literally play out the story and then go back and do the Which side missions. Which is my stuff. plan the next time I go to play. I just want to finish the storyline and then I'll go back and deal with the achievement hunting part of it. Right. Um, yeah. I, I love Chris Judge's portrayal. Of Kratos, yes. I, I love I love him as an actor. He just he's a very funny guy. If you get him like out of character as Teal, but he just does such a good job of Kratos that uh, it, it's just a joy to listen to. Boy, <laughs> somebody had and Elsie found it. It was a graphic of a human head, and it showed different types of headaches and where they occur. Oh yeah, you know, I know this one. You yeah. saw this, and then the last yes. one was Kratos' head tattoo with boy. boy. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's touch it. headache, migraine headache, <laughs> cluster headache, boy. 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 <laughs> yeah. If you ever get a chance, check out, and I think they had it on YouTube. Somebody had an outtakes uh, reel. It is on YouTube. Uh, it was yep. just, hello, boy. I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, just, it was dad jokes. I, yeah, was if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what we did see the last the last podcast. Yeah, that that was yeah, up was there with the outtakes from the Berserk Golden Age arc outtakes for just. I think the thing pure that made value. this funny. I think what made this particularly thing funny is that I take certain pleasure seeing somebody laugh at their own jokes. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? As long as they're funny. Because he's sitting there, because he's reading it for the first for the first time, and he starts cracking up before it even starts. It's sort of like, okay, this is funny, and this is it's. I find humor in that, like even with yeah. like professional comedians when they're I, like laughing in the middle of their own jokes. I'm like, I, that's how it's supposed to be. If you make yourself laugh, then it's funny. <laughs> I remember watching Stargate outtakes. Yeah. With um. There were a lot. <laughs> with uh, with Chris Judge and uh, MacGyver. Richard Dean Anderson. Richard Dean Anderson. I can't believe Chris Judge kept a straight face. Yes. Because you could see him, uh, he was just deadpan, and then he would just double over laughing. Um, so, yeah, he's he's a guy that likes to laugh a lot. And yeah. watching him in this portrayal is just, it's very impressive. And it's, it's a very, very emotional portrayal as well. I mean, I haven't even got all the way through the story, and his range is just very, very impressive. As you yeah. see, Kratos... No spoilers. No, no. <laughs> you, the general overview of this is Kratos is a father. Mm-hmm. And the emotional changes in his character from Avenger to father. Yeah. And I think he just did a great job portraying that in what I've seen so far. Didn't they... Didn't... Um, I think it was either PlayStation or X, but I think it was PlayStation that they had uh, God of War 3 mm-hmm. in... Um, in well, uh, PS it be, Plus, it has to be PlayStation. Yeah. Okay. It's well, I, I wasn't game. sure because it's also um, it's a no, Sony it's, property. It's, yeah, it's it's an exclusive. Huh? It is an exclusive. Yeah, like okay, uh, because for it, some it reason, a, I thought it is a Sony real exclusive. It. It, a okay. real exclusive, not a Microsoft exclusive. I'm just saying in general. I wasn't sure because it's exclusive just, world yeah, premiere. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 See, you can't do it that way. <laughs> Because if you saw... Well, we can talk about E3 later. Yeah, so, uh, next <laughs> but, um, thing was... The, 
And was it just finishing up the, the, the thing this is the, with um, God of War 3 was the one before this? Yes. Um, where people yes. went, where they went back to, you know, it was part of uh, PS Plus. So people that hadn't played it before and they go, oh, oh, this is what the game used to be like. No, no, yes. no, no, no. We like the new one. And I, I liked that because I was not a God of War fan at all. Because I did not like the old gameplay, I did not like how it was portrayed and the, the where they focused on certain aspects of Kratos. So when I see this one, basically Dad Kratos, I like him better. So I just that was all for that. So after this um, Monster Hunter World, they a few months back introduced a, a collab event with Final Fantasy XIV. Mm-hmm. And Yoshi P um, is a massive, massive Monster Hunter fan. And he's all, a director producer of. Yeah, he's now he he's the guy that basically saved Final Fantasy XIV mm-hmm. uh, from the rubbish heap. Mm-hmm. And he has since moved into um, corporate at at Square. He was also the head of the Dragon Quest series for years. Yeah, Dragon Quest X is his baby. So Monster Hunter is just appearing everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, Monster Hunter World, which is different than the other Monster Hunter games. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's a great game. It really is. It's It's got a very low entry bar for new players to the series, mm-hmm. which is nice. So if you ever had any interest, this is a good one to check out. Mm-hmm. But I got, I, the, uh, mm-hmm. I got the Switch. I got the demo for the Switch game on my Switch. Okay. So I'll oh, try that. Generations, I think, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Generations That's is supposed to be very. Game. It's supposed to be very good, but it's more of the minutia of Monster Hunter. Well, it technically came out before World. It just didn't come yes. out in the U.S. before right. World. <laughs> right. That's yeah, correct. It's n- it's not World. Yeah. Trust me. It's, oh yeah, it's a I, lot I I believe you. So um, it's a very fun game, but what they brought to <laughs> Monster Hunter was a behemoth fight, and in Monster Hunter World. As somebody who is a has had extensive MMO experience, there is no hate management in Monster Hunter. It just it's not built into the game. It doesn't exist. So what they did is they added it. And what you have to do when the Behemoth spawns, uh, or you go to attack him, is that whoever is poking him in the head gets hate, and you get a red line showing that you had its attention. Um. My single biggest fear with that setup was borne out in YouTube videos yeah. of uh, you know player hunts with with certain popular YouTubers, and you could tell when you had MMO players that were playing Monster Hunter mm-hmm. because they knew how to handle it, mm-hmm. and then when you had Monster Hunter players playing an MMO encounter because they were dead on the floor. Yeah. Um, Behemoth, you know, in, in Final Fantasy games, and especially in modern, uh, the modern MMOs, 11 and 14. Although I would mm-hmm. argue that in 11 it's worse. Mm. Yeah, um, it's worse. Mm. But 14 being the most recent, Behemoth fights have a series of mechanics that have to be done or you die. Mm-hmm. It's not, oh, I messed up, start over. No, it's, oh, I messed up, go back to camp on the cart. Um, one of the, the main mechanics being comets, which will target a player, and you have to then run to drop the comet where you want to drop it while not getting hit by the comet. And it's really important that after you drop these comets, you keep Behemoth away from them, because they're, they're it's called comet, but they're rocks, and comets technically aren't really rocks. But you drop it because you have to hide behind it later. So... After the behemoth drops three of these, it then proceeds to try and destroy them so that you can't hide behind them, so you have to pull it away so that its area of effect attacks and its its conal attacks, which you mm-hmm. project out in a front, uh, in, a, in a cone pattern in front of the enemy, for those that aren't familiar with the terminology, um, don't hit these things. Mm-hmm. Because what happens a little bit later is he casts Meteor, which you cannot avoid. Well, uh, it's almost cannot avoid. Ecliptic being the final version of this, I'm getting there. Yeah. So he casts Meteor. This is a and, long fight. <laughs> right. You have to hide behind the comets because Meteor will kill you. You can't mm-hmm. mitigate it. You're dead. That's it. Mm-hmm. Unless you're hiding. 
-hmm. Well, if the comets don't have enough health, it wipes out the comet and you. So start mm -hmm. over. So trying to teach people how to handle these mechanics, which have never appeared in Monster Hunter, mm -hmm. just I took one look at that and went. And there's only three deaths that are allowed. Oh yeah, and yeah, there are so four people. Like per party. like most Monster Hunter quests, you have a, a limit to how many deaths can be had by the party before mm -hmm. it's an automatic fail. Mm -hmm. So I took one look at this, watched a few videos, and hit that with a how about no? Well, next <laughs> just, had come out during that time, so well, all of a sudden... I'm we getting to just, that. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of said, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll play some No Man's Sky, because I'm not going to deal with this. Yeah. Um, there is nothing worse in Monster Hunter World than being in an encounter, doing really well, somebody joins in and does one of two things. <laughs> Stands in camp and does absolutely nothing. And just tries to basically sponge a win. Mm -hmm. Because when a player joins your quest, the monster gets tougher. Yeah. So for somebody to join in and stand there and do nothing, no. Of course, now yeah, I finally it, figured it out how to... it does it for the entire group. Now I finally figured out how to kick people, so that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> the other thing is when somebody joins the quest because they have the minimum requisites but have no idea what they're doing and proceed to die three times in rapid succession, thus failing the quest for you. <laughs> After you've beat the monster down to the point where it's nearly dead. Now, Oh, there is one. I, there's a third one. What's the third one? Where they end up uh, waiting in the, um, in the camp and not realizing that Ecliptic will also hit the camp. Well, either way, that's still a fail. But right. I'm talking about <laughs> in, this is general Monster yeah. Hunter World etiquette kind of things. Yeah. Um, like, I don't have any problems helping somebody get through something if it's something that mm -hmm. I can do. That's not an issue. But when I watch somebody die three times to exactly the same mechanic, I decide to go watch Netflix for a while. Because, <laughs> like, there's items you use, there's things you do in the game, like any, any multiplayer game like this. Well, they're not free, and they take time to mine up. So, mm -hmm. mistakes are fine. Stupidity is not. Yeah. So yeah. I think I kind of reached a point where I was like, you know, I think I need to take a break for a while. Have I ever told you the definition of insanity? Yes. <laughs> I was a psych major. I'm quite familiar with it. <laughs> and in fact, I get to watch it demonstrated to me every day at work. <laughs> it's like, we've had this discussion. This is the third time this week. Yeah. Write it down. Thank you. Um, yeah. But anyway, so Monster Hunter is a really, really fun game, Monster Hunter World. And definitely, if, if you like Boss Fight, the video game, check it out. Mm -hmm. um, but be aware that you're playing with other people and your mileage may vary. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, that one specific encounter, you cannot do solo. No. I and, mean, you well, can, Well, there are people but that it's... can do it. But you've yeah, got you to, be to be good. And there, there is a way to <laughs> cheat your way through it. Because one of the things they brought to the game from Final Fantasy XI was the Dragoon character. No, you don't get to play as a Dragoon. It's it's an Insect Lance set. But they brought all the artifact armor, and it, it actually looks really, really cool. But they gave an emote in the game called Jump, which if you've played Final Fantasy, you know what that does. If you actually time it right, you can dodge Ecliptic Meteor with a jump. Mm-hmm. You have to be really Yeah, you better know exactly when to jump. That's all I can tell you, because I watch people try it, and I watch them assume the standard Dragoon fighting position of face down on the floor. Face. LOL, Dragoon. Yes. So, <laughs> it's kind of like when people try using a mushroom to dodge a blue shell. Yes. It's, it's yes! Possi it's possible, but you got to time that just right. Yeah, to, yep. to, to, quote, a, a exactly movie, right. to quote a movie that I love, this is going to take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Yes, that works too. <laughs> so, continuing on the yeah. Final Fantasy theme, went back to Final Fantasy XI after a nine-year break. Hey. Yeah. Um, Should have waited two more years. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we, we played in the North American beta, which was when the Rise of the Zillard expansion was released, and then it was it's when it was... the PC beta. PC beta, yes. That's when it was officially released to the West. The West. I have played... Seven or eight MMOs 
And when I say play, I'm talking about years, not like a month and quit. Right. For each game. There is no game that I have ever gone back to except mm-hmm. Final Fantasy XI. Yeah. Because as brutal as those 2003 systems were at the time, there's just something about that game and that world that keeps wanting, making me want to come back. We so, know the map. We know exactly where to go. We know where it's, we are. Exactly it's where it not is. Even, <laughs> it's not even that. It's just the game. It's just yeah. the way the game was made. Um, now, the good news is, and one of the things that really drew us back, is Square has done a great job trying to bring this 16-year-old game into into modern times. <laughs> as best me. as possible within the limitations. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are certain limitations with this game. This game was designed for the PS2. Uh, the PC version was kind of an afterthought. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not... What they, because in, in Japan, most people own consoles, not gaming PCs. Yeah. Which is kind of the opposite of the West, at least at that time. Because at that time, PC gaming was... That's where it was at. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as the best of the best. So, the graphics, specifically textures, polygon counts, things like that, are all designed under what we call PS2 limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, they have since updated the graphics... But they can't do the kind of overhaul that would make it look like Final Fantasy XIV without completely rebuilding the game. And from a financial standpoint, it does not make sense. And I, I can't argue with Square. They're right. It's too much of an investment. They've got a very loyal player base. I mean, we play on the Asura server. It's the most populated server that's left in Final Fantasy XI. Mm-hmm. But even on, like, a Wednesday night, which is hardly prime time, mm-hmm. there's 1,800 to 2,500 people on yeah. That's impressive for a game of that age. Just that server. Yeah, that's just that server. Now, there aren't that many servers open as there used to be. I mean, there used to be about 16 or 18 servers, if I remember right. Yeah, um, I think there's eight now. So, they've... Some of the things that used to happen was you had travel time was a big deal. Yeah. Um, and you had to run everywhere. Although running was like you were running to a reggae chase track. You know, dun, 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 dun. it's just very, very <laughs> slow movement speed. Yep. Um, they've upped it since then. You're trying to figure out the reference? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how reggae has like a, a plotting kind of feel to it? It's not exactly what you would use for a chase scene. So. Okay, this, this, this might surprise you, but like, I'm not a, a reggae connoisseur. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> just I, up... As soon as I heard it, I was like, I know he got lost on that look, one. <laughs> it's easy. Just look up Bob Marley. I mean, <laughs> I know a little bit about Bob Marley, but, like, I don't... I... Reggae in general is very, like, relaxed music. Okay. It's not that it doesn't it's have life like to it. It's not like a fast music, like, you know, uh, some sort of chase scene that will be something that's yeah, like it's, this. It's this not... One's... It's not 180 beats per, per minute. It's, it's you're not, trotting you know, as opposed to just running. <laughs> actually, what you're doing in the old game at movement speed was more like a fast walk. Yeah. It wasn't a run. So, no. anyway, they've doubled, at least, regular speed. movement speed, mm-hmm. which is great because it would take... These zones were very, very large, and it would take you a long time to get anywhere. Just to get if, to camp, if I were to 35, 40 minutes. If I were to run from any of the starting cities... Mm-hmm. to the original hub town, which is called Juno, mm-hmm. on foot, mm-hmm. without dying, mm-hmm. and dodging aggro that will absolutely mm-hmm. kill you if it catches you. Yep. It would be, I think the fastest time that I have ever done it in is about 30 minutes. Yeah. On foot. And that's not stopping. <laughs> oh yeah, you couldn't, I mean, no stops, nothing, just straight run, you know. So, they've changed a lot of that. Travel now you can... was content. <laughs> yes, that was content. Oh, yes. Um, so, anyway, they've done away with a lot of that now. You know, you move faster on foot. You move faster. You now actually have mounts that you can summon you can versus having to go somewhere and pay to ride a Chocobo, which lasted for 30 minutes. And then, <laughs> when you were done, you were kicked off and it took off no matter where you were. Um, yep. So, all that has changed. Getting around the zones is much, much easier. There's now one, two, at least three ways I can think of off the top of my head to get around. And one of them does not rely on you having been there first, which, which is, is great. You have, to, you have to pay a, a certain type of currency for it, 
but it, it's pretty minimal if you're playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, they have introduced new things called trust NPCs. So what it does is these and it's it's a new type of magic you know in in the game world that allows you to summon magical clones of certain NPCs in the game with their abilities. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like, okay, why would they do that? Is that just kind of a neat thing? No, it actually allows you to fill out a party without having to stand around and wait for people. Hey. Yeah. That's Which, how we, we quit the first time around. Yeah, that's why everybody quits the first time around. Because... Everything's group-based. You used to... When I was um, in, in 2000... In 2001, 9-11, I was out of work the December after 9-11. Um, you know, the industry I was working in changed and a lot of people got laid off and I was one of them. I spent what? A year. Yeah, about a year. No, it was a year. Trust me. Yeah, it was, about a, uh, well, it, was a, it was a year and I was able to get some work which mm -hmm. did not work out. That was 13 months. Was back out again on unemployment and then finally got a decent job and got back to you know, being an adult. So, <laughs> um, look, I love being home except for the part where I'm dependent on the government. That part sucked. So... <laughs> We had to move in with your parents. <laughs> yeah, well, among other reasons. But um, <laughs> anyway, thank God my parents are nice people. Uh, they're freaking that awesome. I love them. would have been hellish. Um, yeah. So what you would do is you would go to Juno and stand around waiting to get a group. Hours. For hours on end mm -hmm. to get a group and spend most times 40 minutes getting to the area where you were going to fight monsters to level... Only to have somebody go, oh, i got to go AFK, I'll be right back. AFK meaning away from keyboard. Half an hour later, that person comes back, oh, I'm sorry, my cat was on fire. You know, some nonsense <laughs> like that. There yeah. was no auto-grouping system. You had to create the groups. Yeah, modern things that, like, WoW put mm -hmm. in, like a duty finder or raid finder or things like that, they didn't exist. Well, Splatoon has it as well. Right, well, this you is... You have an auto... Modern, yeah, mm -hmm. modern games have these features. Yeah. Right. Games from 2001 did not. So, right. you know, yeah. there was no matchmaking. There was none of that. This is just, you stood around and you shouted and you looked for people that had their flag up looking for party. So you mm -hmm. get all the way to the site and ten minutes later somebody's got to leave. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you can't fight those monsters if you're down one or two people, especially if that perp ha person happened to be the tank or the healer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you spend all this time to get out and play. And then you can't play. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just wasted, you know, I get home from work um, when I went back to work after doing, well, with that job, a 10-hour day or 11-hour day, yep. stand around looking for group for two and a half hours, get to play for 45 minutes, then I gotta go to bed. Yep. Uh, and this, I was like, I just can't do this. And as much as I didn't want to quit, quit. Because there was no mm -hmm. point in paying for something that I really couldn't do. Yeah. Um, so that's all gone. And now... Of course, you can still group up and do things, and, and at mm -hmm. level cap, yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. But at least for us, we can now duo content that you could not... I mean, basically, you couldn't fight anything in this game solo. Nope. To a large degree. Well, effectively, yeah. Yeah, to a large... I mean, there were ways to do it, but it was very slow. Very painful. Yeah, and I mean, people would do it as a challenge... I guess because they felt they hadn't been punished enough as children. I, I don't know. but No, I was forced to do that. I remember that very... But now we can play... <laughs> and, and I'm not forced or we're not forced into certain jobs just to get a party. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you want to get a party, you need it to be a healer, a tank, or, bard. or a bard. <laughs> because a bard Freaking could show up bird. naked with a flute and you're getting a party to do whatever you want. I've seen so, them yes. do that. I saw I've literally seen them do that. Without unequipped. getting deep into the game, there's certain job. It's, it has the job system similar to Final Fantasy V, where you have a main job, and then you have a job you set as your sub job, which is half the level of your main, which is neat. Mm -hmm. And there are certain combinations that are acceptable and certain combinations that are stupid, and you yeah. just wouldn't do it. And I've seen yep. bards show up with the stupidest job combinations <laughs> possible. And they weren't look. They didn't even log into the game before they had people clamoring for invites to get them to their yep. groups. <laughs> because to put it the way my one bard friend put it, I make good groups great, and that's yes. exactly what they do. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> now there is no more being forced to play a job just so I can play the game because you just summon the NPCs to take care of that, and off you go. 
Yeah, and that's really, what I ended up starting as a thief, and you started what warrior? Well, warrior that's because right. warrior is useful for everything. Yeah, and it's it's one of those uh, Swiss Army knife type sub jobs. It it works for many many different combinations. Um, the really scary part of this whole thing is that the NPC tank that we use most is more competent <laughs> than most paladins that I've played with. <laughs> All of them are more part than pugs, uh, pickup groups. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I've, I've partied with a lot of tanks over the years, and there's only two or three I could think of that are better than the NPC. Yeah. And that's really bad, which I mean is a, is a testament to Square's programming ability. Yeah, I was a, I just about to say that. And also, a, doesn't have the same. Also, thing. a complete damnation to most player tanks. <laughs> now, one thing to be said about this too. Tanking in Final Fantasy XI, like everything in Final Fantasy XI, requires you to know what the hell you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not Final Fantasy XIV. Now, as somebody who played for three years and tanked a lot of raid content, yep. tanking in Final Fantasy XIV, for the most part, is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Tank swap, provoke, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That's, <laughs> that's what you do. Because that's the yeah. style of game it is. You know, you're constantly mm -hmm. pressing buttons. In, in 11, you had to have a hate routine. You had to understand what your abilities did, what your spells did, how threat works, and mm -hmm. when to do certain things, or everybody dies. And that's it. Yeah. Yep. So, is it brutally hard? No. Yes. No, I, I wouldn't say so. it's brutally hard. I would say it has a high learning curve. And then once you get it, it takes work to be good at it. Oh, it's two thousand. It's two thousand two EverQuest. Yeah, it is. I don't even like that comparison, but that's the closest thing. Yeah, it is a challenging game. Mm -hmm. um, mechanically, can I, uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Um, as someone who has no interest in MMOs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is there anything about this game that could possibly appeal to me? Story. Yes. Hands down. The storyline. That's why a lot of people come back. Story. And the and I'd say the world. Um, it, they did such a great job with Vanadil mm -hmm. and all of its lore. Uh, I mean, as much as I hate the uh, the Chains of Promathia expansion, the storyline was excellent. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's the whole thing. Square just does a great job. We kept playing fourteen because the story was good. Mm -hmm. The gameplay drove us nuts after the first year and a half. Yeah, Square's always been fantastic with games, which people can always quibble as to the the type of game style, even between one through, you know, like people. Don likes Final Fantasy VI. Some people like Final Fantasy VII. Some of them swear by Final Fantasy X. Is but they've all had the same thing in common: is that they fell in love with the story, and especially in an MMO. It is such a broader story because you're now going between expansions and whatever, but they all interlink with each other. And so a lot of us old people coming back to this game, because there's a lot of us coming back. It's crazy how many people are coming back after years where it's like, I miss being in this world. So for new, there's new people that have never played any of these games, didn't even play 14. They were like, why does everybody keep talking about 11? And then they're playing it and they're like, okay, I understand. So outside of the varnish looking like it's still early 2000s, because no matter how much they try updating, it's still that aesthetic. How they present the story and involve the character through that story is awesome. And so if people are very much into story-driven type things, this game is definitely for you. As far as graphics go, if you've mm -hmm. seen the original EverQuest or mm -hmm. Asheron's Call, yeah. they're kind of blocky and chunky looking. Yeah. This game is not. They actually did a really great job with what amounts to low poly count models mm -hmm. using their textures and shading to hide a lot of the low polygon counts. Mm -hmm. So if you're just looking at things... Um, like, not really scrutinizing models, you'd be like, wow, this looks really good for its age. Yeah. Now, well, if it's you, nice if you also get, they do the cutscenes. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, there are in-engine cutscenes. through the, Basically, the only time that you're going to see a CGI fully rendered cutscene is the opening movie where Tavnazi is getting wrecked. Yeah. Everything else is in-engine, so there's no immersion break. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, the, the storylines in the game, and they just released in the last couple of years um, 
something called the Rhapsodies of Vanadil, which is a single storyline that ties all of the different stories that you've played through in the game together into one overarching narrative as to, to why things have happened in this world. And that's what we're mm -hmm. currently playing through. So anybody that's interested um, and doesn't mind a challenge, it is mm -hmm. worth checking out. Yep. Definitely. We're on the Asura server. You can find us there. Yep. Check out uh, Elsie's channel, Arsenet on yep. YouTube. Uh, yeah. Our character names are there. So we're not hiding anything because there's kind of no point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's fun. We really enjoy it. It's nice to come back after this amount mm -hmm. of time and to find all these quality of life improvements. Yeah. Um, no and, game is perfect, and I'm sure we're going to run into something going, Ugh. Oh, well, look at the inventory <laughs> space. Oh, this whole yeah. thing. So we couldn't get our characters back. Yeah. Uh, which we had a lot of content done on. Which <laughs> yeah, it, it's a situation. Square tried really, really hard. They did. Like and three freaking days trying to do this. The, the bottom line of this is that there was a conversion from the way things used to be structured in about 2010, I think it was. Nine. Like 2009. No, it was literally 2009, the year we quit. Right, so in, say between 2009 and 2010, by the time it was finished. Mm -hmm. So they had to migrate people largely away from Play Online, which was Square's attempted at Steam that didn't make it, um, away from Play Online to Square Enix accounts, which is what everything is based on now for Square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During that process, something happened to our character. We didn't migrate our characters. A friend of ours was playing them, and then he stopped playing. But something happened, mm -hmm. and the, the character files were effectively corrupted. When Elsie spoke with, she spoke with three different people out in San Diego, was it? Or San Fran? I'm not sure. I think it is San Diego. I'm not in, sure. In San Diego. you know, uh, California. Mm -hmm. SE, uh, customer service reps. North America. Went yeah. all the way up to a supervisor. Yep. Who, thank <laughs> God, had actually been there for more than 10 years. Yeah. So he, 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 was, he was actually there when it first started. He was around just after this conversion process finished. Mm -hmm. So he knew a lot of what went on with that. And he pretty much said, when I looked at your characters and I saw the error codes, nobody else knew what it was in the data center. Mm -hmm. He says, I saw them and he goes, oh my God, I remember what these things are. He said, yeah. now here's the problem. We don't have the tools to fix it. They no longer exist. Yeah. He said, there is literally no way to fix this. It's like the equivalent of, um, it wasn't like we we were in different servers, we were, because the server that we're playing in now is the server that our characters are in, which is why we couldn't take our old names, because they're technically still in the game. Um, but what ended up happening is that when they tried migrating it, all the information didn't quite make it. Yeah, it got corrupted. Right, so... If we had the ability to go back in 2009, we could have fixed it then. Right. But at that point, we had no idea because... Well, we didn't know that even that, that had happened. That, that yeah, they had gotten, at all, you know, because they, they were the being translation played... Process. Yeah, they were played until, like, 2011. You know what I mean? Right. But something happened with the account, so all of that information, once they got... I think it was, like... 13, 14, 2013, 2014, that they decide, okay, we got all the characters that we needed, and they basically wiped the old system, and they're now starting with the new system. Now, this is nine years ago, so we're trying to retrieve information that has now been wiped. Now, had, so, had we been playing at that time, yeah. this would have been fixed, yeah. and it would have been fine. And we could have yeah. just logged right back, like our, our one friend, um, his character's fine. Yeah. He was able to log well, in and was, you know, all he had to do was basically repay for uh, a month of Final Fantasy XI and off he went. It was no big deal. Yeah. Um, so, so Square. What you're saying is uh, you should never have quit in the first place. <laughs> no, you know, at the time we quit, it was the right thing to do. Um, and it was the right time. We didn't feel bitter like we did the first time around. Yeah, the first time we were. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, the first time we were forced. I know. I got the joke. I'm just choosing to ignore it. Um, just laughing, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So um, they were great, and yeah. what they did, the guy, the uh, the supervisor said, you know, he felt really bad, and he actually gave us two codes for the full version mm -hmm. of the game today, and all the freebies yeah. that go with it. So you know, 
hats off the square from a customer service standpoint, which is something I never thought I'd hear myself say. <laughs> um, because we used to always complain about square. Yeah, because it's years ago they were, they were terrible. They were terrible. Um, and they were awesome this time but around. They, yeah, they were great. They were really helpful. Um, the nice part was a couple of the reps were 11 players, and they were like, oh, mm-hmm. that sucks. <laughs> because they know the amount of work that goes into getting the things done we yeah. had done. So, uh, the good news is... Uh, Experience increases are insane, so mm-hmm. it's reasonably easy to level up. It does not take months like it used to to get to level 30. Um, you no longer lose experience when you die. <laughs> uh, up to level 30. Um, yeah, before it used to be level 5. <laughs> yeah, don't remind me. So <laughs> they did a great job all the way around. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun to play again. Uh, for new players, it will be a little daunting mm-hmm. because of yeah. the game's 16-year history. But... You'll be playing with a wiki in front of you at all times. (laughs) You will have uh, BG Wiki and Final Fantasy XI Clopedia open at all times. Yeah. um, If you'd like to have any idea what you're doing. Um, Yeah. But don't let it scare you. The game can really be a lot of fun if you enjoy the challenge. Yep. So if you're by yourself, you can play. And if you have, um, like Don and I play as a duo. And I love the system where we can play and then just fill out whoever we need afterwards. If a friend comes in and play, we just put out three of the trust as opposed to all four. You know, all six of us can play, you know, that sort of thing. And so I like it a lot. The The benefit, um, because I might as well just go to my part now. Um, the benefit of going back from the beginning, we get to see what all the new stuff that they added since our departure, right from literally level one. So I get to see how they streamlined them, and it's wow, holy crap, <laughs> they learned how to streamline that. So um, we've been able to uh, catch up very, very quickly and get things that we never did before very, very quickly. So I'm like, I'm surprised, and yes, a lot of it is because we've done it before, but the speed in which you can do things comparison to what it was before, especially for people that are, were curious that they were X11 players, um, it's a very different game. I mean, it's still very much the same. The, the, the core game has not changed, but a lot of the, the lot of you know QOL, QOL, you know, yes, quality, quality of life, life. updates, um, really really changed it. So, yeah. Um, so been obviously playing that. Um, I've been recording it and doing YouTube videos on that. So that's at least new. Um, I'm still trying to get it to stream on Twitch. Um, I, at some point, I'm just going to have to sit down and see how I can get that to work. I have been streaming on Twitch. Um, I did Monster Hunter World and uh, No Man's Sky, um, which is actually going to be my first Platinum. I'm not that far from Platinuming that game, and I'm very surprised. (laughs) Because I don't normally go for Platinums, but I was just like, I did like 95% of this. I'm like, oh, that's all I have left? Great! (laughs) And so I'll probably get that in the next, um, I would say month because I'm now playing um, 11 a lot more. Um, I've been doing good. I haven't been playing when Don wasn't playing. Because normally I'd be doing a lot more playing. <laughs> like used to have several different characters and Don comes in. He's like, what? Where? What level are you now? <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's what my new thing now is try to develop my uh, Twitch streaming and get to doing that. It's always a little bit difficult with my health to get an actual schedule, but we'll see. So um, um, it's a lot easier to stream on the PS4 or even Xbox for that matter. And I believe the same thing with um, with uh, uh, Nintendo. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> William is writing stuff on the Google thing, and I'm sitting there laughing at what it is. We'll discuss that later. So anyway, um, I believe it's also just as easy to stream on Switch. I don't know if you have the ability to do that as easy it yeah. is. And, okay. It's yeah, just with literally the, uh, click just a button, a capture connect card. it to Twitch. Oh, oh. no, sorry. I'm, I forgot. Okay. Interesting. I okay, forgot that uh, I forgot that Sony has built-in streaming. Uh, no. And so does Switch. Um, yeah, yeah, so does Xbox. Okay, Switch doesn't have that. But if I wanted to stream, it's no problem because I have a capture card. So. Okay. No, I have to get a capture no. card just to be. Yeah, it's integrated in Sony and integrated on Xbox. That you just literally hook up your um, your Twitch account to it and hit a button and off you go. So I've right. been able to do that 
with No Man's Sky and, and Monster Hunter. And then now I'm on PC. I'm like, I know I can do this and I'm doing OBS and whatever. It's just, it's something about it. It just doesn't look right. So one of these days, I, I might even borrow you, William, just to, hey, can you just look at this to see if this works? <laughs> Yeah, sure. No so, problem. but yeah, I'd, I'd like to stream that um, on off days or even when, when Don and I were playing, you know, just to see if anybody's interested in seeing that type of content. We just play a couple hours a night and um, and go from there. So that's what my thing is. Um, uh, I'll throw all my bits at you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have any bits because I don't, I don't buy any. I so don't just... think you can until I'm partnered and oh, I, okay. I would need like 50 50 followers and I think I'm at 10 now because oh. I've been doing this sparingly. I get all the other stuff where I can stream for X amount of time and, and mm -hmm. have the amount of people talking but not you know, I don't have a schedule and I think I, that's obviously what's killing mm -hmm. it if I had like a specific schedule even if it was once a week you know for X amount of time. Put a, put, just... a, put a link in the chat and I'll give you follower number 11. Oh, <laughs> so for those who are interested, it'll be uh, Twitch dot. Uh, should be. Let me write that down. Twitch TV slash Arsenet. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So there. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna see if I can try to get at least one day where it's dedicated to streaming and I'll probably add more than that. Again, my biggest thing has always been, which is the reason why I'm unemployed, is my health can really take a turn for the worse very short periods of time. And if I have a schedule and I miss it, people will be upset about that. So um, it's sort of like a loose schedule until I'm able to get around to do that. Because if I'm able to keep a perfect schedule, I'll be able to go back to work. <laughs> And that hasn't been happening, so it is what it is. But I'll try to do what I can. I actually really enjoy streaming. I enjoy talking to uh, the couple of people that do show up, and they've been showing up uh, fairly often, so I'm really happy with that. Um, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out um, from, you know, in the future. Um, I love playing uh, games and sharing stuff and talking to people while I'm doing that because usually I just sit there and listen to podcasts most of the time <laughs> especially with No Man's Sky is that they're playing and then I'm like going oh, ran out ran out of podcast crap what am I gonna do so that's when I started streaming and talking to people there so it's always fun so yeah so now that we've just spent I don't know like an hour talking about what we've been doing over the summer um a couple of um I guess really? roundups if I can just oh uh, okay you got another two go ahead Re really quickly uh yeah. so so first off I just looked I have in fact zero bits on my account so I have to watch <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch more ads uh, yeah. the, the, the console that I was thinking of earlier was the PC FX which is a 32 bit version of the PC mm -hmm. engine Yes. Um, uh, while at a video game con, I played an omnidirectional treadmill VR uh, uh, setup. Oh, that's what I saw on your tw uh, on your Twitter, Instagram. Uh, actually, it was on both. Yes, it was on both. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, and Instagram at two 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 will. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a it's a it's a heavy workout because basically yeah. you're wearing low friction shoes on this uh, curved uh, um, 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 platform. You're wearing a harness so that you don't fall. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it looks really cool. I, I, I don't have a lot of experience with VR, but that looks really cool. Um, also, mm -hmm. while at New York Comic Con, I tried to play Kingdom Hearts 3, but I couldn't get a ticket, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, that That's a whole conversation I'm not going to have right now because I'm mm -hmm. a little annoyed. Anyway, um, uh, I, but I did get to play Resident Evil 2, the, 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 the remake, um, at Capcom's booth. Um, they had a the, the, the booth itself on the inside, when you get to go in, it's like... They dress it up to look like an old police station that mm -hmm. uh, has, you know, maybe seen uh, better days. Um, you know, because <laughs> that's that's where the setting is based on. Um, and I got to play the game itself on Xbox. I don't know if it was the regular Xbox or Xbox One X uh, if they had because because I, I don't remember seeing the console. Um, game is uh, really scary. It looks really <laughs> well. I mean, there was there was a, I didn't get to play. You know, you only you only get so long to play. But like, I got some good jumps out of me. Um, it looks great. Well, they went for horror. Well, yeah, uh, that's what they're going for. Totally. Uh, yeah, it's really good. It's I, I I fully approve of it. And this is kind of coming from someone who doesn't have 
a lot of experience with Resident Evil uh, franchise, mm-hmm. but it's it's I really like it. It's one of those franchises that I've been meaning to play at some point, but this mm-hmm. one's good. So that's all I wanted to say. Cool. Um, we can actually use that as a springboard. Um, during the interim from uh, the last time we did the podcast to now, um, E3, uh, several Nintendo Directs have gone through. Um, did we want to talk yep. about any of those? I mean, I'm obviously I'm not going to no. go through point by point. Um, but a lot of announcements, uh, because one of them, one of them, at least for the Nintendo Direct, uh, you, you had one that you were very interested in. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Now, when I saw it, when it came out, I'm like, oh, that's going to be William. I I cannot wait for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to come out. Is that with January or is that November? That is December. December. Okay. That is December. I got is the pr- Pokemon one then January? November. Something's coming in January. I will have to look because I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, because I usually go by, um, I follow a lot of streamers. This is just Nintendo Switch schedule. Anyway, um, so yeah. just just to uh, just to kind of talk mm-hmm. about my excitement and anticipation uh, for. Um, uh, the, Super, uh, Smash Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to multitask here. Um, That's fine. <laughs> I'm not finding that what, what this mysterious January game is. Don't worry moment. about it. It could just be that I I saw something different and conflated it with another thing. Anyway. So. Um. Uh. Anyway. So. Uh, is that Animal at- Crossing? Uh, that's twenty. 20- well, it's rumored. It's it, Animal Crossing is rumored early 2019. Oh, okay. That's, That's that right. I know what that is. Um, so at the at the E three, um, you know, they made announcements, but like obviously Smash mm-hmm. has been a, a big one uh, lately. Um, the opening tr- the, the opening trailer was great because they're like Sakurai, who loves to mess with people at this yep. point of his life, um, was like, oh, here's a trailer of uh, the characters. We'd like to show you some of them, and like. You know, they they start showing all the characters, and it's like, oh, hey, they're back, they're back. And like, oh, yeah, Ice Climbers are back. Yes, thank you. And then Pokemon Trainer came back. And I, at that point, I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) I am very suspicious of this trailer, as if they're about to tell me that everyone is coming back. And then... Except Waluigi. uh, (laughs) Waluigi was... Okay. All right. All right. About (laughs) About that. Well, and Luigi, because he's dead. Yeah. Walu- <laughs> Waluigi does not deserve to be in Smash Brothers. All right? Why not? Daisy Ooh. deserves to be... Yeah, no, I'll say this. Daisy is more deserving to be in Smash Brothers than Waluigi, because Daisy was actually in a mainstream Mario game. Waluigi, the biggest accomplishment was being the villain of Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix, which most people don't even know that was th- what happened. He is game. a playable in like three quarters of all the uh, Mario Party games. Yeah, he's in the spin off games. He, he doesn't have a main game, he doesn't appear in any So of if Wolf- everyone he's- is there and he is not, then therefore not everyone is back. No, no, everyone. No, he was never, but he was never in it. At all? Never. Waluigi was never a guy. Then they should just put him in there and just shut everybody up. No. Yes. No, they should They should focus There's on... There's plenty of space in that. In fact, heck, if they can bring freaking Monster Hunter um, Rathlos... <laughs> Monster Hunter World Rathlos on there, they can just put freaking War- Waluigi yeah. in there. No, no, they gotta focus on, like, cool characters to put in the game. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what, some like serious shade. Trainer? Yes, the yoga trainer, or you know, or Pikmin, or actually Pikmin's not hey, in there. Hey, I'm hey, surprised hey, it hey, isn't. Hey. <laughs> See? Hey, don't don't pick on Pikmin. The point uh, being that Alamar's if you great. say that everybody is in there and one of them is not, then therefore it not everyone is in there. That's just the point. Semantics. The point, <laughs> no, no. The point of the trailer when they said everyone <laughs> is here is that they meant. Every character from every past Smash Brothers game, right. including mm-hmm. ones who have been gone for a while, are back. Yeah. So you got Toon Link, Young Link, Pichu, you know, uh, Wolf is back, uh, you know, people Cloud, like that. Cloud, which was DLC before. Yeah, Cloud, everyone who was DLC is back, Bayonetta is back. 
uh, mm-hmm. Ryu is back. You could have you live. We live in a world right now where we could have Solid Snake, Cloud Strife, <laughs> Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, Ryu Hayabusa, Simon Belmont, and Pac-Man all fight each other in the same match. And I like how they were explaining where you saw the map and it was just like this block <laughs> of just blocks. <laughs> it's a hundred. It's it's over a hundred stages right now. It's insane. That's great. They are packing and- so much content. I am I am so happy that Simon is in the game. I'm even happier that Rector Belmont is in the game because I prefer because <laughs> I like him more. Uh, Ridley, is he an Echo or is he? He is technically an Echo, but some of Simon's moves are based on Rector's game. So. As as right. they said in in the direct, who's really echoing who? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Are they going to do any DLC for this? Uh, they have not. S- they have not said. Okay. I I imagine we will f- either find out close to launch or post launch. One of those two. Okay. Um, because I because I imagine we don't even know who the the full roster yet. Yeah, which is, considering that's a hundred and how many? No, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um. We're getting close. Well, how many of them are there? Uh, how many are there? There is 68 plus four echo, five echoes, five okay. echoes. Uh, so that that would be uh, um, 75. Well, 75-ish. Yeah. 75. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of characters. That is a lot mm-hmm. of characters. Um, yeah. yeah. So I- I'm really happy. Um, a lot of the trailers have been quite violent, uh, as you will. <laughs> Uh, except uh, King K. Rool. I am so happy he King K. Rool is back. He was on my list of characters I really want, and he looks great. He's literally based on all the Donkey Kong games that he appears in, including Donkey Kong 64, which I'm really happy about that. And it's it's hilarious how like all these these trailers feature characters being you know brutally beat up, and then you get to Isabel's trailer, and it's Dog Secretary gets a letter in the mail. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and even like even the trailer recognizes, you know, this is kind of silly, <laughs> but we're doing it anyway. Um, yeah. I am so happy that like a real classic mode is back because, quite frankly, the classic mode in Smash Four was not great. Um, and uh, a lot of the new modes that they showed off, like Smashdown and um, uh, Squad Strike. Really looking forward to that stuff. That all looks really cool. A lot of new items yeah. look really cool. The p- new Pokemon items look really cool. A lot of just a lot of really cool stuff that they've shown. And there's still that mystery thing that they haven't shown yet, which I am willing to bet money is a brand new proper story mode similar to Subspace Emissary from Brawl, which I am okay. really happy if that's the case. But that's what it has to be because. That Rathalos stage that they showed mm-hmm. is just a flat ground. There's nothing else in there. It has to be a boss battle stage because that's what they did in Subspace Emissary. And you, they showed, they showed, they snuck in with the with the Simon Belmont announcement. They snuck in a, a you fighting Dracula on a stage that is not the Castlevania stage in multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like, I think I think I think they're they're you know I think they're putting a single player mode or subtype that is. According to people who depixelated that that yeah. screenshot is apparently <laughs> called uh, apparently called spirit modes, yeah. Which might explain why you know people like while uh, why why Luigi are dying. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it looks great. I can't wait. There's like I mean, there's still characters that I want. <laughs> um, you know, like Mike Jones from Star Tropics. It's like. I don't understand why Star Tropics doesn't get recognized in uh, Smash Brothers because it is a first party Nintendo game and I would like I'm them. curious if that's also going to be in in future um was I guess the the Nintendo Pay service because they're slowly yeah. but surely bringing classics and stuff. Maybe. I mean, it's I mean, here's the thing. Star Tropics was on the Wii Virtual Console. It was on the Wii U Virtual Console. They have oh. the yeah, they have the rights. But it's n- nothing, literally nothing from Star Tropics has been in Smash for four games now. I want something, for God's sakes, put something in it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is what, December 12th? Uh, 13th. Yeah, I want to say that, yeah. 
I'm actually just going by memory because I know yeah. so many people are really, really looking forward to that. I, I pre-ordered the game of... and I pre-ordered the Pro Controller. Now, I'm... I think that's a good party game for me. I can't... I won't be able to just play that over and over and over. That's just... Again, that's not my forte with it. I was more interested in um, the proper Animal Crossing. Now, that was rumored... Uh, that was rumored um, when um, Pocket Camp came out. They're yeah. sort of like, okay, no, that there's no way that they're not going to do this and not a proper one. Well, so of I course. believe this some yeah sometime next year. I I'm still not going to get it. <laughs> it just it. Well, because you don't. Have to I have no. Well, that's what I mean. It's like I, like I buy them. I buy systems if there's a game that I want. Yeah. And that would have been the closest to. I still have a lot of problems with with the system. Um, I don't find the controllers comfortable. And if they're not comfortable for me, there's no point in me playing. Because I, I, I admit, when I play games, I play for hours. And if after like 20 minutes my hands are cramping, um, I, that's not comfortable for me. Um, I do find it funny that they had mentioned that, um, that the... Uh, uh, GameCube um, controller is going to be playable. Oh yeah, yeah, you can you can use that because the adapter works. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But it's just yeah. like it's it's a problem. Um, I've been watching a lot of um, uh, let's plays of uh, the current Mario Party that came out last week. I think it was. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and that looks like a lot of fun. Except you have to play. With the, with the small, with, with the single Joy-Con, yeah, it's, um, it would drive me insane. Yeah, literally I mean, would drive me insane. So it's just like, if you can't get a controller that is comfortable in my hands, I cannot buy you. As much as so, I really, really want the game, and you can't uh, play yeah. it with a with a pro. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll just say that like. For me, I have no problem using you know the two Joy Cons in the holder. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just me. Uh, I've played with uh, you know just the singular Joy Con in the past. It's yeah. functional, but it's not preferential uh, yeah. to say the least. But, so I'm yeah. curious. Do you believe because um, Nintendo has um, it, there's been a lot of rumors. There's some um, the, they're discussing that there's going to be a new iteration of the Switch. They've done this a billion times. I don't even know how many DSs are out in the world right now. <laughs> There's a lot of variations. So, yeah. so I'm curious if because one of the one of the thoughts that I was thinking because I remember they had some issues where something about the actual architecture of the current Switch um, is uh, there's a lot of people that can hack into them. Uh, they fixed that they, already. No, but the idea is that that was there because of the type of architecture. I'm curious if the next one will have the same one or they're going to change it to address some of the problems that they are trying to avoid in the future. Um, uh, I got no idea. Do I do I think that, you know, Nintendo is making some sort of new Switch? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, like some sort of iterative cuz it's it's a, it's technically a portable and a console. So yeah. And Nintendo likes, you know, making new versions of portables. You know, like we said, look at how many, you know, 3DSs. Like, forget DS. Forget how many 3DSs there are. It's, it's there's a lot. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that doesn't surprise me. Do I think they're going to, you know, make it so that only some games only work on this new uh, mm-hmm. uh, version of Switch? No, no, I, I don't. No, no, no. I don't think so either. Yeah. Because they've always I, been backwards compatible onto their yeah. own system. So that's so, that's not what I meant. I'm talking about oh, yeah, 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 where yeah. they would change it, like like PlayStation, where PlayStation, the original PlayStation, that big yeah. brick that they had, and then all the way up to the Slim, it was still the same system, but vastly different architecture, where they made things faster. You could yeah. put more into it. Um, uh, just if a separate iteration of that comes out that addresses some of the problems that I have with the system, um, maybe I'll get it then. But right now, it's bothering me. I have to pay for cloud saves. Um, I have to it just it's just annoying yeah. as all hell. <laughs> all of the little things. It's like, uh, because you know me, I would play the hell out of Animal Crossing, like. 
hands down, there's a lot of RPGs that come out there that are um, that play well on Nintendo systems. Some that are just Nintendo systems. Yeah, you know, Octopath I just Traveler. I would have loved to have played Octopath Traveler. It's just it's just frustrating that it's like, come on, people. <laughs> so I'm happy that it's taken off because I was terrified that a lot of the the, the issues that I have with it was going to permeate to everybody else. But luckily, they have a strong um, lineup that people have been able to ignore it. And so that's great. But it still doesn't address my issue of why I'm not going to buy this. <laughs> so so um, are you looking forward to the new um, Pokemon? No. The, okay, you're not. Now, do you, I, have uh, you so ever played the original ones? Uh, so I the, the one that's play... coming up now is the Let's Go's. And Let's the Go's. mainline okay. one won't be until, what, next year? So yeah, uh, maybe next year. They yeah. said, maybe. they 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 said maybe next year. They're still um, working on it. <laughs> oh yeah, they're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So here's here's my here's my history of Pokemon. Got Pokemon Blue. Played the ever loving crap out of it. <laughs> I got Silver, uh, and Yellow, and Crystal, and I quit Crystal, and that's that's it. I've never played another uh, mainline Pokemon game. Um. Between then and now, the only Pokemon game I've played that's new was Pokemon Fighters. That's it. Is that the mobile that's, one that's, that that's, came that's, out? That's, no, that's the Tekken fighting game. That's the Tekken fighting Okay. Like, there's yeah. so many variations. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only game, the only Pokemon game I occasionally play outside of uh, Pokemon these days is um, Pokemon Puzzle League, because that game is fantastic. Cool. <laughs> um, but... Uh, that's for the N64. Um, but uh, there's... I still yeah. have Stadium. Yeah, I have... Uh, me too. But I, I have no uh, desire to get um, Pikachu or, or Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. I think that's its own thing. I think those are mostly for the people that are still playing Go. Yeah. And there's a lot and, of people uh, still playing there's Go. There's a lot of people still playing Go. Um, I, I, I played it for like an hour. And decided, all right, that's not for me. <laughs> because again, it's 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 not. I can't even say that it's not my generation because I still play a lot of video games, regardless of what age they're aimed at. Um, it's just not a system that I, I I I wasn't heavily invested in it, and I certainly didn't watch the game, the 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 anime. Um, so I watched I watched a lot of the anime as a kid. And it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's really good. <laughs> Yeah, at that point I can say it was a generation thing because it, it, it was oh, I yeah. was too old for that series. Now my nephews are totally different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one of them is I think is your age, so yeah. But um, uh, any other uh, Switch titles you're looking for coming up in the next um, few months? Because th- this window that has opened up of games that are coming out, holy crap! <laughs> uh, next few months, um. No, actually. Okay. Uh, the only... Right now, outside of Smash, uh, I'm looking forward to Fire Emblem Three Kingdoms, okay. uh, uh, which comes out spring. Um, I hope that the localization is good, because I believe that's being done by the Treehouse and not 8.4, who... 8.4 does the better translations for the Fire Emblem games, so I'm a bit worried about that. Okay. Um, but, I mean, Nintendo's been kind of well behaved uh this generation with localizations like you know with um with uh yeah with xenoblade 2 uh for example was uh kept a lot of its content intact without you know altering and you know nintendo america doesn't it's not east or whatever that was (laughs) nintendo america doesn't force uh companies to you know, change content, even though know, yeah. th- there's no need to... Do you want to talk about censoring? that really quickly? Sure. Okay, so there was a recent announcement made by Exceed, who is a, a great company that does localizations of yep. Japanese titles, that uh, the release of the newest uh, Senran Kagura game uh, was mm-hmm. being delayed for the PS4 because they were removing the intimacy mode from the game. Um <laughs> And they then went on to say that uh, they respected the wishes of the platform holder, which is uh, a very not so subtle code for Sony's making us do this. Yep. <laughs> Specifically, Sony America and Sony Europe. Um, yep. A lot of people are annoyed because it's because 
A, uh, the intimacy mode was in the previous Seren Kagura PS4 game, so yep. this shouldn't be a problem. Um, yep. The game, it's obviously... It's a Seren Kagura game, I mean, come yeah. on! <laughs> yeah, obviously the game's not rated AO, it's rated mature, so, like, you don't, you know, yep. the, and, um, you know, at least in the, in, the, in the English language version, they're all consensual adults. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like it's, it's a rated it's a bad, M game anyway. Yeah, it's a rated M game. What's even what's even weirder is well, I don't know about weirder, but what's even like a worse look is that you have a Saturn Kagura game for the Switch that is exclusive to the Switch that just came out like a month ago that is literally just the intimacy mode. And okay. Nintendo America, <laughs> Nintendo America had no problem with it. They're like, yeah, sure, whatever. HD though Rumble. Nintendo's as, kind of back and forth though. Nintendo well, has, now things well, right that are now, rated right now lower, they're on the up. Right now yeah, they're on if the they, up. If they yeah. do rated lower stuff, like if, like if it's rated G or or thirteen T. or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, I have seen them do. Yeah, um, I know. Trust me. Some uh. some ninja things, but if it's a rated M game and you licensed it and you're trying to censor it, it's like, why did you bother? Yeah. I don't play that game, but if it's an M game, I expect the M. <laughs> yeah, well, like, like well, unless they're planning to this... repackage it to a T. Well, obviously, this is not Exceed's fault. This is this is Sony throwing their weight around, and I don't understand why they would force Exceed to do this outside of some sort of new morality code that the Sony America seems to have, which I think is quite frankly uh, ridiculous. Yep, yep. I know. I agree because it's not even evenly put. Um between games it did some yeah. weird stuff where hey you're perfectly fine with you know x amount of violence and whatever but you know as yeah. you wrote down sony america hates boobs <laughs> <laughs> like you got you got no problem with what you know the grand theft auto series does but oh, uh, God, yeah, yeah which yeah. is pretty ridiculous when you consider yeah. it but yeah. you know this japanese title oh no yeah you can't have that yeah some are done in on the crossover to from from Japan to here, and I've seen that. Um, it's again some of them already come like that. I think the big difference with this is how that has been telegraphed, because oh, yeah. the company usually does it on their own, and this one is they're being forced to. Now Absolutely. Steam had their own issue with um, with adult rated games, that sort of type of thing. Where it was, they couldn't have any of them, and then they had some of them, and now it's a free for all. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a long so it's, story, but yeah, yeah. You but could each... literally you could literally buy porn video games on Steam now. Yeah, I think that were before you go. I think the problem with Steam, more than anything, is that there are people on Steam who are underage, and whose parents do not monitor them, so they expect yeah. companies to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know this is ridiculous, but I mean that is the issue. The yeah. issue oh, yeah, no, is absolutely. Absolutely. parents that don't parent, that mm-hmm. don't monitor what their children do, because they don't want to be the bad parent, and then blame companies. Well, Steam is a platform, mm-hmm. and it caters to people who want to throw money at it. Now, I may not like those games, but that's up to Steam whether they carry them or not, and it's up to me whether or not I pay for them. Yep. Yeah. The simple thing is, if you don't like it, don't buy it. And if yeah, your child is in... buying it, first of all, why does your child have a credit card? <laughs> exactly. If not, that's theft. <laughs> and secondly, if your child has your credit card and you're not aware of it, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's, it goes uh, back to the parent. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's also not... worth mentioning that the PC version on Steam of Seren Kagura uh, will, in fact, be uncensored. So I if you want to play that intimacy mode, you get it on PC. <laughs> like I said, not my thing to each his own. Yep. Steam is a private business. Yep. Stop making them parent your children. Exactly. Then again, of course, this could all be YouTube, and in which case you can't even use a curse word, or all of a sudden we're no longer allowed on the platform. That's 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 a whole. Other that's a whole no, separate. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a can of worms that we are not opening right now, <laughs> because you know what? That's a rabbit hole that has no bottom. Well, the the point being that in within the last, I think what about three years now, mm-hmm. in total, um, as a, as an industry, even talking about video games and whatever, that's been a weird topic on whether or not all games have to be uniform to fit 
in a certain um, demographic available. Which is, which is so it, Which stupid. is dumb. Yes, yeah. it's dumb. Look, we have that's, that's, the, in which case, get rid of all the ratings and just have yeah, everything we, all We have the thing. ESRB. Yep. If a parent would take five seconds and maybe read the ratings, they'd know what they were getting into. Yeah, but like, 90% like, of the time they allow whatever to raise their kids, whether it's a video game or a movie or a series. Well, the problem is they whatever. haven't figured out a way yet to be able to watch, look at Facebook on their phones while parenting. Yeah. So if Facebook maybe came out with a parenting app, then maybe we'd see that done. <laughs> but you clowns need to put your damn phones down and pay attention to the people you produced. Yeah. It, but but I, it's mm-hmm. just it's just so frustrating also when, like, you see, you know, members of the media, like, celebrating this, you know, forcing of, of censorship. Because this isn't the first time this happened either with, with Sony. Yeah. And it's like, I, like, I'm sorry, but, like, how elitist are you that, like, you will put down people who play these games or, like, will, or buy the games? Like, who are you to say have any sort of authority of, like, what people should and shouldn't play? Like, no one's getting hurt by these games. I don't play, like, for the record, I don't play Seren Kagura. I, I haven't played any of the games. I have yep. no problem with them existing. Like, people, if people want to get them, they have a right to. I, yep. it's, not, it's not the job of me or anyone, regardless if you're in the media or, or if mm-hmm. you're a console manufacturer, to tell people that they can't buy a game. It'd be one thing if this game got an AO rating. I would get you know, Sony wanting them to turn it down. Like, that I understand. But it's, it's obviously going to get an M-rated game. So, like, why, like, what business do you have telling people what they can and can't enjoy? It's harmless entertainment, and, like, you can't just act like it's just, like, horny, you know, men playing this game, because women play it, too. I remember yep. the, there was an interview with the, the frickin' director saying that about 40, 30 to 40 percent of the user base is female. As women, yep. Yeah, and it's, it's not just because of the sexuality, it's because, like, apparently the characters are actually pretty well written, because, like... Out beyond the sexual stuff, they're like actually like strong, wi- like strong women. Yes, you know, having apparently. seen some of the Senran Kagura ag- anime, that's mm-hmm. true. It is true. I mean, it, it, this is the same argument that I've made with um, with different ecchi series, which again, not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. But it's sad that some of these series, in, in to my mind, are actually ruined. By being etchy because they had a good basis for a, like a relationship type series that was funny or smart or witty and it just ends up being oh pie and that's the whole series <laughs> you know and it's kind of like wow you had a good concept here that you I mean again if it's what you want to do that's fine well like for example everybody knows what a dead or alive game is yeah well the old ones anyway but, no, yeah, but the that idea was... being is like that that it's his identity and the marketplace right. should be the one bearing that as opposed to each game litigated based well, on whatever morality is good that the, day the, because this has changed the I part going of back this... to the 1980s when the, when the uh, original what was that um in uh, uh, which one is the one for movies the ratings for movies MPA? MM yeah the MPAA mm-hmm. was first Initially, it's like this has been going on since the '80s well, in terms of rating content for parents that have n- no the, idea what the content is. The, if it's rated M, that's what's on there. Stop trying to rewrite or redo a series to fit something that isn't. The, in which case, don't license it. The part of this that, to quote Peter, Peter Griffin, really grinds my gears is. <laughs> That the same people who are celebrating this act of blatant censorship are the ones that are busy cramming their worldview down the rest of the country. Yeah. Yeah. The are you intellectually that that honest? Be, I mean, what, yeah, what the that hell? That should not be in, in the, that discussion. That's the point. Is It should be, if something is labeled a certain way, it is up to the market whether or not somebody's going to buy it. It should not be the right, either is... the distributor... Or anything changing the content of that game, unless that was a decision made directly by the, con- the content creator, that's their own product. But something like with Sony turning around and saying you're going to have to change it to fit whatever, then they shouldn't have never licensed it in the first right. place. If Sony's not the only one that done this. This is it, just the, the most recent one that it's sort of like, if, hey, 
Sony because usually or... this is quietly done. Like I said, Nintendo's been doing this for years. Bringing Dragon Quest is one of the biggest ones. <laughs> so I think this is the first one where all of a sudden Puff Puff is now. Yeah, you know God. what that is. <laughs> so if Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo or Steam decide mm-hmm. they do not want AO rated games, mm-hmm. that's fine. That is not. I don't see a problem with that. If that's what they decide on their console. This is the ratings the band platform, that we right. want, and that's it. So if this particular... And I'm not necessarily defending Senra and Kagura. I care less. Yeah. But <laughs> if M is acceptable for something from Rockstar, then M is acceptable from anyone. Yeah. It is not only acceptable from Rockstar, because when Rockstar comes to the Sony board meeting with dump trucks full of money... It's now acceptable. <laughs> because apparently, as much as I hate the Grand Theft Auto games, they basically print money. Well, it's so, the number one selling game of all time. That's what I'm getting at, Period. huh? Period. Yeah. Sony looks at that and says, we're not really into M-rated, well, except for this one here where you're shooting cops <laughs> and going after whores. That's okay. Yeah. But a bunch of boobs and swimsuits, oh God, no. We can't have yeah. that. What about the children? <laughs> I don't know. Last time I looked, little Johnny was busy shooting up the police with an M16, but that's all right. Yeah. Or okay. dropping a plane on them. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like, um, what? It's the inconsistency <laughs> and the unevenness on when they do certain things. That, so, that is the point Unfortunately, that I am... this is not going to be the last time any company, not just Sony, is going to do something like that. Yeah. And it's just... Yeah. That's the point that I'm trying to make, is that there is a serious lack of consistency. Yeah. It's like, look, if, if this is what you want, that's fine. It's your look, I don't, console, it's your platform, it's whatever it is. Like, I don't have kids. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just... Be, I'm pushing 50... I don't need somebody to be policing the content that I get. Right. You, Unless it's illegal, in which case there are clear delineations of what would be illegal, yeah, yeah. I should be able to buy whatever the hell I want. Rules need to be applied evenly across yeah. the board. And it is or not. else they have no value. Yeah. So. so. Either way, that should be its own thing. Um, finally, uh, the actually, the last thing that I said, because we I did mention that Nintendo's going to... Um, is bringing at least some iteration of the Switch, we may have new generations coming up very shortly. Um, my husband and I, Don, <laughs> we've been talking about getting a second PlayStation because I'd like to actually have one back here um, because we like playing games together and it's kind of impossible to do an online game together on the same station. So. Um, PlayStation, I believe it's more rumored now, although they're really alluding to it. I think it was earlier this year they had said that they're closing their generation, um, I think it was, what, June, July, I think is when they mentioned that this this is at the, they're at the end of the cycle. So it was sort of like, okay, we're not going to be doing any more in here. We're looking for the future. And, and now there's just, just straight up, okay, we may be by 2020, there's a new, new one. Um, I, especially since they're now um, hiring new people to develop the next system, like sp- specifically marketing people. Usually when they get to the marketing people, they're actually pretty far along. So co- could be end of two ni- uh, 219 or even 220. Um, I don't know, Ed, just with the, just like even the previous uh, PlayStation one, I like waiting until there's a game for it, so I'm not probably going to jump into the next system. Xbox has already been the first one that said, you know, they're the, gonna, probably going to be the first ones out of the gate, um, which is the reverse of what they did the last time, right? Uh, no, no, Xbox came out, uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. Yeah, because Xbox you're One right. came out. What you're thinking of is uh, the Pro and um, and Xbox One X. Yeah, anyway. One X. Uh, X. What are they going? What are they going to call it? Xbox. Uh, Xbox Six. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, B. I mean, look. Of course, Sony's working on the next console. You always work on the next console. That's what. Yep. All these companies are doing. Even I guarantee you, even Nintendo's working on the next console. They at least, at least, at least spitballing ideas. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, they're all working on it. Here's, I'll just ask one question. Both of you just give a yes or no answer. Mm -hmm. Will we see the X new Xbox by the time we get to E3 2019? 19? No. Well, will we see it announced, I should say. Not, not released, just announced. Like, will we, will, will Phil Spencer come on stage and be like, this is the new Xbox and it's in his hands or something? I would say no, because Phil has been doing things differently. They were crucified when they came in way too early and then ended up delaying it for like almost a year and a half. And in which case, why did you wait? <laughs> why did you do it that long? Um, so Phil has been doing a lot of good things for Xbox. Again, I don't. I right. didn't buy the Xbox One, and I'm not planning to. I, I thought there was right, a build right. system right off the bat. Um, but what he did in, what, the year and a half that he's been in there has been astounding. So if he sticks to his guns and is doing it better, like he has been in the last year, um, I would say if it's within a year, then they would have to. Like, if it's, if it's coming out in 2020, like, especially if, uh, first or second quarter of, se of 2020, they have to do it by E3. But if it's not, if it's, like, second or third quarter, they probably won't. All right. So, um, so final qu Oh, sorry. I would say no. What are you saying, Don? My hope for the folks that work at Microsoft is that no. Mm -hmm. My thought is that they're going to. Because okay, the, so the pressure from the stockholders to get Xbox back on top has got to be immense at this point in time. And yeah, I so think you're saying the red ring of death is coming back, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I, and you know, we, we say that being funny, but I think yeah. that could be a reality. Now, uh, right. the Xbox One did not have the same no, problems the, that the 360 did. But part of the reason the 360 had the problems that they did is because Xbox was trying to get out in front of the PS2. Yes. Because Which the, is ironic because the pl PlayStation Three got delayed. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's this is always a cat and mouse game w with yeah. this type of thing. So they rushed to get out in front of the PS Two. My thoughts, three. I don't have proof. Is uh, well, I mean three before it released, but they were trying to capture some of that market as the PS Two yeah. was getting long in the tooth and the PS Three was taking longer to get out. Um, yeah. But I think they rushed production. And it bit them hard. Well, no, no they did. Yeah. They did. Mm -hmm. so there was no, a, I think they rushed. They, they rushed. Well, I haven't looked into it, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm I, dithering I've, a little I've, bit. So. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, as someone who has looked into it, mm. they did. And Do you think that they're going to announce the uh, streaming box first? I think they're going to announce yes. it in conjunction. Okay. Because I think yeah. they're two separate things. I don't. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Maybe. If any announcement, I would think they would do the streaming thing first because that's easier to put up. No, because... I would think they would do it at the same time because they want they don't want people to panic. Like right. they don't want people to think that they're only doing a streaming box. They're like, oh no no no, don't don't worry, you can still buy discs if you want to with this model. It'll I cost still think there's gonna be DOA. Yeah. No, well, I mean I, that's. I think we're I, I gonna mean, see the streaming box. And they're going to yeah. talk the streaming... If they have a 30-minute presentation, let's say, they're going to talk the streaming box up for 25 minutes of it. And yeah. in the last five minutes, they're going to talk about the Xbox One X 5379S, <laughs> whatever the hell they're going to call it this time around. Um, yeah. And I think that's what they're... They're going to basically drop that little bomb at the end, then drop the mic and, and split. Yeah. All right, so, so final question. Will we see the PS5 announced by E3 2019? No. Okay. No, that for me, that would be emphatic no, because if we're just at rumor stage that they're even barely working on it, it's a lot further out than I think it is. Some are saying as far as three years. In which case, I would hope, because if I get a pro and then all of a sudden another one comes out, I'm going to be very unhappy. <laughs> I would, yeah, from a business sense, I would say they're not going to announce it because the pro is relatively new. Well, and they, they don't are... want to truncate those sales, you know, before it's, it's, it's a, a life Well, the new one ending. is, yeah, the, the Xbox One X is actually newer than the Pro. The Pro was out a year before the um, the Xbox One came out. Right, but if you so, figure the average console life cycle is about five to seven years. We're well past that on both. Not on the Pro or not. 
No, but that's that's more of an iteration of its current system, it, not necessarily right, it, a it, separate generation. It is an iteration, but they invested a significant amount of money in it, and they're going to want to try to get a return on that investment before they torpedo it with the announcement of a new console. And now, um, Sony's been pretty clear that it's considered still an iteration of the current generation. Well. We'll see. So, but I just from just from how uh, they've been handling how they discuss things. Um, play, uh, Xbox has already went out the gate going. This one is definitely coming. We're touching blah 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 blah. It's not rumor mill. It came from them directly. We're still in rumor mill on PlayStation, and PlayStation's been con pretty consistent on their release schedule. So, if they haven't gotten that far, I think we're at least a year out. At worst is that they'll probably say something in the PlayStation experience in December of next year, like in their own in yeah, their own event. I would um, say that's event. more likely, yeah. But I, for E3, I don't think they're going to do that because they'll, that would really derail anything that's coming out on the PS4, especially if it's a year and a half out. All I want to know is, will Dreams actually be released on the PS4 before <laughs> PS5 is released? Because that game got announced at the PS4 announcement. Uh, press conference, and it is still not out. I still, heck, we can go with half a Square Enix games, anything that Nomura is touching. Uh, how long has. Hey, Kingdom uh, Hearts 3 comes out January. It is actually coming out for real. I would not. I saw it I in action. I won't believe it until it is physically out. It is, it is a they real have, game. I saw it in promised, person. They have promised, they have had footage, they have had people demo. Please look forward for to it. For years. <laughs> and as soon as that came out, they could finally start making the Final Fantasy VII remake that they announced years ago. They fired the old people, killed the the, um, the, <laughs> the uh, engine, and started all over again. This is 15 all over again. Yeah, if, if oh the Final Fantasy VII remake that is coming out in any way other than graphically resembles what I have seen, they can just scrap it now. Yep. It's going to be a character action game. We're going to get ready for... <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Midgar. No, no, no. Devil May Cry. Oh, no, 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 no. Even better. It's a strategy game. <laughs> it's, it's a card a, game. It's a, it's a, it's a card game. game. <laughs> Somebody shoot me. You can, you, can, you can woo all the characters while playing as car Class Drive. And it's I a, do mean all the characters. It's a mobile um, game. Okay, so speaking of that, what? if you're familiar with Team Four Star, <laughs> you're going to want to watch their Final Fantasy VII um, abridged series. I'd rather just play Final Fantasy VII first, to be perfectly no, honest. No, 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 definitely play it first so you know the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. And then watch this because That's it amazing. is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> so which which Final Fantasy game should I play first? Because I have a bunch and I just haven't played which them. Which ones do you have? I oh Jesus. Um, let's see. I have, I have seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, ten two, Crisis Core, Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy Adventure, uh, Mystic Quest, um, uh, Tactics for the PSP, um, uh, the the Wii one, Crystal Brer Brer Bearers, Crystal Bearers, mm -hmm. um. And um, some of the PS1 ports of, uh, of uh, uh, older Final Fantasy games. And Final Fantasy 1 on the NES. Hmm. Final okay, Fantasy so 1 is pretty generic. I would. Oh, and I have Final Fantasy 3 on the Famicom, but I can't play that because I don't understand uh, Japanese. Yeah. That would be <laughs> difficult. Oh, uh, Dirge of Cerberus is basically takes place after Final Fantasy 7. So well, yeah, yeah. I was just, no, I'm just, I was just saying just in general, just putting them together. Um, uh, seven is the first iteration of it being uh, basically 3D, not right. 3D. Um, yes. you know what I mean. Yeah, 3D. Um, it's the first non-sprite based Final Fantasy game. It's the first um, non Nintendo Final Fantasy game. That too. too. Yes. Yeah. Although that's no longer the case. So seven <laughs> is a great game. Yes. Right. It really is. Um, Nine is right. a phenomenal. Nine game. is also a great game. It's right. a chibi character, so but you don't you don't particularly you're not adverse to a completely no. different changing. No, so I, you'll probably love Nine. You, you'll enjoy it. Um, it's a, it's got a lot of good humor in it too. I would say start right. with Nine. Eight 
<laughs> is the Final Fantasy that shall not be named. In uh, space. Uh, oh, it's not... <laughs> Out of all the lists, if we were to rank them, that is our last. We played it. I played the well, hell out of it. In fact, there was a hundred percent of it. I would put eight higher than ten. Yeah, no, that's Ooh. true. No, Ooh. no, no, that's true. That is that is some fighting words to some people. Yes, there is a sp this, for the reason <laughs> yes, that is. people love ten is the reason why we hate it. There's a mechanic in there which I know you know it's called bliss ball. It is literally locked. You cannot progress unless you are forced to go through that mini game. Well, that's hours. not the only reason. I know what about that. The other it's, reason what about is Meg Ryan. the fact that he's Meg Ryan and then ha ha ha. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't I, like the character. I think. Um, what about Ten Two? Ten Two is actually a phenomenal game. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't played it, but Elsie played it, and another friend of ours the did, and they loved it. The world motion has become me. Yeah. I won't give in to it now. Oh, the music, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Final Fantasy X-2 Barbie dress-up. But yeah, yes, Barbie dress-up. Um, yeah. The mechanic of the game was great. The bigger issue is that I hated Ten. We tried playing it like three separate times. I've got it we on had Steam. A I'm a third of the way through it. Eventually I'll finish it because I We had an to. evangelist <laughs> friend of ours that desperately brought it every single week and kept showing us his progress and kept showing us his progress past Blitzball, past this. And I'm like, I hated the game. I'm very much into the story. And if I can't stand a story, uh, there's nothing in the it's world that's going to change it. Tetis was the oh, albatross yeah. around the neck of that story unfortunately just the and way the character course, was yeah. portrayed yeah. just uh, it really broke the immersion for me yep when i can actually like 13 more than 10 yeah, you know wow. you effed up 10 <laughs> it was at that moment that they realized <laughs> they have they effed up <laughs> But, um, yeah, I would say 9, I think, um, every, what's good about the Final Fantasy series in general is that they're all independent of each other. So it's not like you have to, except for Dur uh, Dirge Cerberus that is tied and to tactics. 7, not with Strongly Cements. Tactics is his own world. That's from, that's Ivalice, um, which is actually, yeah. oh, 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 oh. It's tied to 12. Yes, 12 is a good game. Oh yeah, I own twelve also. Yeah. Yes, twelve is, oh. and especially if you got the Zodiac yeah. edition, the new one. Mm -hmm. No. Good. Oh. Now, everything, everything that I own is original version. Okay. 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 Well, we played both of them. Um, you probably have a little difficulty seeing because that was that game was very blocky, and there were times where um, a lot of the graphics that they tried doing, especially like in in towns, everything kind of meshed with each other, and it was a little like. I don't know how to explain it. The, Almost like dirty? The HD remaster cleaned up a lot of the melting yes. that happened. Yeah, there was a lot of melting. So I had, there were some things where I had to see, you know, like clicking um, uh, to see if something was on the ground because there's a lot of like shinies mm -hmm. and stuff you can pick up. I couldn't see them very well on the PS2 version, I think it is. Well, part of the problem, yes. too, is I attempted to put the PS2 version on a 52-inch Sony. Um, yeah. It was never designed... <laughs> Like that game was yeah. never designed to be rendered that way, and yeah. it just it hurt. Oh, oh! I completely forgot. I'm looking at it right now because you just mentioned uh, Sony. I bought a Japanese PS2 at Otakon. Oh, oh, cool. Okay. I could play Japanese PS2 and PS1 games if I wanted to. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you'd be able to play Tobal too, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and there I can, you go. And I can, and I can, and I can watch Japanese DVDs if I want. Nice. So, yeah. That is, uh, I've been wanting to get that for a while now. I got a couple of games. I need to dig into them more before I can give any sort of opinion. But they're all anime cool. titles. So, yeah. Cool. Um, make sure that you write it up so that we can talk about it the next time around. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Anyway, um, unless we're done, I think we're, I, unless there's something else. To write yeah, let's wrap up. I need to, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> So either way, thank you everybody for uh, listening, and um, hopefully in the next month or so, as I have said, rough general that we end up uh, doing these um, every month or so. Um, but either way, thanks for listening. Um, you, if you're interested in contacting any of us about any of this, um, always leave comments below, um, because this is always on YouTube. 
if you need to talk to any of us, my social media, uh, it's Arsenet on YouTube and um, Twitter and on Twitch. Uh, let's see, Instagram is Rambling Regan and my website's ramblingregan.com. Uh, Don, where can they reach you? Uh, only social media outlet would be Twitter. That is at Domnal, D-O-M-N-H-A-L. Okay, and William, where can they reach you? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 2D2Will. Um, the, uh, the, it's, good, it's got good stuff there. Follow them both. Check me out on YouTube at youtube.com slash 222productions. That's the number two three times followed by the word productions. I got a brand new series called Obstacle Lab where I do stuff and hopefully don't hurt myself involving obstacle, <laughs> obstacles. Um, and um, um, there's other stuff too, but I'm not promoting that at the moment. So go follow that stuff. <laughs> That's fine. There's always revolving content in, in all of our channels, actually. So, cool. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. All right, gotta go to the bathroom. Bye. <laughs>